of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. For Bill Clement, Chris Simpson, and all of our crew, I'm Gary Thorne. Tomorrow night, good Lord will in Philadelphia Square will be ESPN Tonight. Coming up on NHL Tonight. Game six in Toronto. up closing number is seven this is the list of men that have never gone through that skate shaking hands a loser never lost good news for the flyers terry crisp a member of the flyers squad in 75 which was the last philly philadelphia team to lift the stanley cup but the bad news is this maple leafs goalie eddie belfour and defenseman glenn wesley they play for the maple leafs mm. they have never lost in game seven and if they had Walter Podubny, they would never, ever lose. On ESPN2, it's PTI. ESPN, the first of three game sevens. Leafs at Flyers. Don't hurt anyone at your house, please. Do it for the dubber. Outside the first Union Center in Philadelphia, it may be just round one, but the crowd's ready for a game seven, just like the players. They have battled hard for six games, but tonight it ends. The Maple Leafs and the Flyers playing gallantly into the night less than 24 hours ago when a goal by Travis Green ended game six in the second overtime. One of these teams ends their season tonight. One moves on. Game seven. Next. This is the 106th Game 7 since the seven-game format came into existence in 1939. Hello, everybody. I'm Gary Thorne along with Bill Clement. Happy to have you with us. As the song says tonight, both of these clubs looking for a hero. Nothing more dramatic in the world of sports than a Game 7. We have seen in this series one of the great matchups. Two of the best centers the sport knows today have gone head-to-head. -head. They will again tonight. Matt Sundin of the Leafs, Jeremy Roenick of the Flyers. Matt Sundin and his line mates, not one point in the last 11 periods they are due they want it to be tonight Jeremy Roenick had a great game last night but banged up his knee his right knee was banged up when he crashed into the boards he is playing he told me moments ago on sheer adrenaline tonight both of these clubs went out and tried to acquire people that they wanted for games just like this but a couple of them haven't done what they'd hoped. And, and Gary, that's why the pressure is mounting. Both Tony Amati of the Flyers and Owen Nolan of the Maple Leafs know that when they were acquired, they were acquired for a situation just like this at Game 7. Neither has scored yet in the playoffs. Amati for the Flyers has still got a goose egg. So does Nolan. They have had their chances. You know they're saying a little prayer in the locker room right now, saying, at least let me be part of the process and let me be a positive part of it. There has not been a lot of rest for anybody, including the clubs that came back from Toronto. Last night, Philadelphia had a chance to put this series away. They didn't do it. They get another chance tonight on their home ice. 
It was the most controversial movie at the Sundance Film Festival. <laughs> now, audiences are discovering... It's easy money. Gonna get us caught! You should never underestimate... You'll be fun! ...an overachiever. You can get away with anything, don't you? You're clever enough. Better Luck Tomorrow is provocative, leaves Rolling Stone. How does it feel to be famous? Better than sex. A funny, sexy, scary powerhouse. Two big thumbs up. Boom! Better Luck Tomorrow. Study hard. Rated R. Starts Friday. Now playing select cities. What do you get when you combine a banker with a ball player? Play ball! A big hit for your community. These two teamed up to hit a home run when he got his bank to work with a community coalition and other groups in the area to improve the athletic fields. And she got all the kids to participate. Because together they knew if the kids were playing ball, they wouldn't be playing with drugs. Visit HelpYourCommunity.org to see what your group can do. Because you get more. When you get together! Introducing new body wash from Old Spice. Put my love to the test. It has a dual action formula, so you'll get really clean, smell really great. Hey then, need help with your anatomy homework? New body wash from Old Spice. Are you troubled by creditors? You're pre-approved. I guarantee you. Go from fat to flat. Yeah. You've won a dream vacation. Wanna see my webcam? Want a better way to block junk email? Everybody loves baklava. Crispier, flakier crust. Switch to new MSN8. Sign up now and get tougher junk email protection, plus two months free. It's better with the butterfly. Call 866-TRY-MSN8 today. A.J. Foyt's father passed his craftsman tools on to his son. Some of my father's tools are a little bit older than I am. Who's passing them on to his son. We still use a lot of, a lot of his tools out there to this day who will one day pass them on to his son. You know, it's just amazing that they were that good back then, and then they're still the best today. Dad knew they'd last at least four lifetimes. 1,600 hand tools made in America, guaranteed forever. Craftsman, Sears, where else? Stanley Cup versus Niagara Falls. Let's see who attracts more attention. Here it is. That's right, you're not seeing these, folks. Pretty cool, huh? This is your wedding present. Oh, oh, you can just take that. Is it pretty? Want to get your name on there? A real cop? Check that. Are we ever lucky? Is this like the eighth wonder of the world? You'd never know it by the way they came out on the ice. They are ready for a game seven. And it all ends up back with the goaltenders. Eddie Belfort, Dallas, won a cup. Now free agent, went to Toronto. Check Monik has never played a game seven. I think the Maple Leafs are in great shape with Eddie Belfort, who I consider to be one of the three best clutch goalies in the NHL today. He has played in four game sevens, and guess what? He has won them all. Interestingly, Ken Hitchcock, the Flyers head coach, has been in two game sevens, and he has won them both. Eddie Belfour was his goalie both times. For the Flyers, obviously their hopes will ride the shoulders of Roman Cechmonic. His track record, he's got none. This is his first game seven. There has to be a first. As far as Roman Cechmonic is concerned, why not make it tonight? Game seven coming up. See the most phenomenal international athletes from six world regions compete at the first ever X Games Global Championship. Presented by McDonald's, beginning May 17th on ESPN, ESPN2, and ABC Sports. Oh, what a day. <sighs> Tell me about it. The car broke down. My bike got a flat. Tons of paperwork. Surprise math quiz. Client kept me late. Boy, you guys look like you need some McDonald's. That's what I love about that woman. Oh, 
For the best protection against water damage, one name says it all. Thompson's Water Seal, Wood Protector Plus Waterproofer for the highest level of water protection guaranteed. Thompson's Water Seal and New Advance, the most powerful protection against water damage. Michelin designed the cross-terrain SUV tires specifically for SUVs to help provide responsive handling and a smooth ride. You'd be surprised just how smooth. Michelin, because so much is riding. the NHL is tough enough to be sponsored by Dodge. I've been hit harder. Me too. Our best trucks, best powertrain limited warranty, plus our best cash allowance equals the best values in America. Here's what's playing this month on Insights On Demand TV. Special. You can start any movie anytime you want. I like this. Even pause, rewind, and fast forward, all with your Insight Digital Remote. No VCR or DVD player required. I have to protect you now. None of us will see heaven. Get out! On Demand TV, only on Insight Digital Cable. What's your insight? For the go-ahead goal, under two to play. A clock! Presentation brought to you by Nextel. Life's better when your cell phone has a walkie talkie. And in part by Southwest Airlines. More than 2,700 non stop daily flights to 59 destinations all across the country. Philadelphia is the site. First Union Center. Packed house on hand here tonight. Its fans here in Philly hoping this was not going to happen. They wanted this wrapped up last night. They couldn't get it done. Toronto won it. Another overtime game. So here we go. One of three game sevens to be played tonight. Just the fourth time in NHL history that has happened. Pat Quinn is in his fifth year behind the bench for the Leafs. He has never failed to make it past the first round of the playoffs. Ken Hitchcock got off the plane with his troops and took them immediately to a downtown hotel to get not only a good night's sleep, but a good day's sleep after last night's double OT in Toronto. He has added Radovan Solmik, who is back in the lineup, who had not been playing. Marty Murray is out of there tonight. And despite Vandermeer getting rocked, he is going to play. There are the records historically for these great franchises in game seven. Boy, right, Donald Bashir and Ty Domi are Velcroed together already. Set in. Jack Bonnie came to knock it down underway. The winner will face Ottawa in round two. And the loser's season will be over here in this game seven in Philadelphia. Tipped away to Tucker. Got it up ice far side. Wesley sent it into the corner. Came around the near side boards. Jam back Travis Green who got the game winner in overtime last night. That one uh, could have been touched. No, they're going to say an icing. Wesley back. There's the touch up for the icing call. But one mistake. I mean, regardless of how either power play has looked in this series, you don't want to be the guy that takes an unnecessary penalty. That's why Ty Domi and Donald Bashir, they were shoulder to shoulder jostling. But neither one committed anything that could be called a penalty. Keep your nose clean. Officials tonight talk about pressure. Don Koharski and Dan Marowelli are the referees. Kevin Collins, Dan Shakti, the linesman. Shot deflected in front on the turnaround. 
Goes back to the point. Spalo winds up, takes it. That one just off the stick and into the corner. Gary Roberts trying to hold it in. Robert Sundin, McGillney stay together on this highly offensive line. At least that's what they hope. Although, as Bill noted in our open, that has not been the case of late. 11 periods without a point. But how long can you go keeping them off the score sheet? I mean, not forever. The Flyers get to do it for three more periods. Great play down low. Ronick turns to the middle, sets it up, shot, fanned on, and held on to by Belfort, Tony Amati. And Amati almost looks like the stick was jumping on him as Ronick set him up. Now, the good news from a flyer standpoint is that Jeremy Ronick looks like his knee is okay. But this is where Ronick wanted to be a left-hand shot so he could fire, and where Amati wanted to be a right-hand shot so he could get good wood on it. All he got was a little shovel redirection of the Ronick pass, and Eddie Belfour is not going to get beat if he plays like he did last night by a shot like that. Ronick with three goals to assist in that five-game scoring streak you saw there. Jack Monick back in behind the net. Roman Jack Monick, first game seven for him. He is now six and ten in his career in the playoffs for the 32-year-old veteran. Shot deflected Primo off the blocker. Belfour, another tough shot. Rebound wide of the net. That was Vandermeer who blasted it from the point, held in by Simon Gagne. Back for Williams to Gagne. Primo's in front of the net. Pass to Primo deflected to Owen Nolan. Nolan sends it out of there. Knocked down. Gagne again gets it and ships it back in. Well, if, if this is any indication of what the Flyer game plan is going to be, it's just get every bit of rubber you can at Eddie Belfour, even from sharp angles, at his feet first early goal. in the game. Because the first goal really matters in this game seven. It sets the whole tempo as to how you're going to play the rest of the game. Mark Recky. Recky trying to get it out of there, but it bounces up and off the Flyer bench for the whistle. Recky has had a pretty decent series with four goals and two assists. Including a triple OT winner in game four. And a baby born along the way. Daddy again, third time. He's clearing up a little debris at the other end is the reason for the delay here. And a broken stick down there and they get it. Austin Recky is now what three games old. Austin's had more publicity than dad got here over the last week. <laughs> cleared back and uh, sent into the zone. Eddie Belfort coming back to get it. Belfort cleared it off the near side. Ryan McCabe got it out of there. This will be another icing call. You can understand why it could start this a little tentative for both of these teams, it being game seven. You'd have to think as the game goes on that fatigue will become a factor. That is why both Roman Czechmonic and Eddie Belfort should be prepared for some surprises. I mean, that means mistakes in front of them. What is interesting in this series, Roman Czechmonic's best game by a mile was last night. He lost. Eddie Belfort's best game was game four. He was incredible. He lost. Now what is the issue? Leads haven't mattered very much. Teams have been able to get leads and then uh, lose them. Eight times in this series, a lead has disappeared. That one deflected. That's going to be an offside and a nice level with us again. Chris Simpson. Chris. Thanks, Gary. Well, after last night's marathon in Toronto, both of these teams hopped on their charters, arrived in Philadelphia at about 3 o'clock this morning. So you know that both these teams aren't only physically exhausted, but mentally exhausted as well. And it's those mental mistakes that could make the difference tonight here in Game 7, guys. And that will get, uh, as Bill mentioned, even tougher mentally as physically they get worn down. We've already had more whistles here in the first two and a half minutes of this game than we've had in almost any period of any of the previous six. Yep. And whose stamina will be really taxed the most here in game seven? Well, probably the guys that had the most ice time in game six. And a whole raft of guys that played a ton of hockey in game six. Travis Green has won the faceoff. McCabe sent it in. The faceoff has been about even throughout the series. Matt Sundin in game six last night in Toronto with the biggest faceoff night of any player as he was very successful. Sent back for Green in front. Third away by Terry. Green comes over to help out. Green was in the corner. Jonas Hoagland there as well. Green got knocked down. Brought out in front on Czechmonic. But rolls to the dot. A big pile up down in front of Roman Czechmonic who lost his stick in the fray. He gets it back. Terry and delivers it to him. And that sent in offside. In case anybody wondered if game seven was going to be any less physical than game one, two, three, four, five, or six. The jury's back. The answer is a resounding, you bet it's going to be as physical. Jimmy Vandermeer in the corner, Chris Terrian, the partner for Eric Desjardins, who went down. 
There's Jim Vandermeer. I'm really surprised he is playing. He he left the game in the third period in Toronto after being rocked by Tommy Fitzgerald. He didn't seem to know where he was. He never played a shift after that. But here he is, the rookie, and now his second game. Amani cleared it over for Eric Weinrich. Weinrich is one of those who's piled up a lot of ice time here, especially after Desjardins went down. Back into the middle on the trailer. Amani is shot with the on the glove side, but way wide missed everything, and the rebound goes to the other end. That, that, that's a mistake neither of these teams can afford to make. It is one of those wide shots from a sharp angle that will create a monster sooner or later. Right back in by Sammy Kapanen. Kapanen uh, tied up by Cabrillet. Fans want a holding call on it. Cabrillet just wrapped the arms around him again. They try to drop it off. Up along the near side of boards, it's cleared out. Sundin was trying to get loose on the other side. He's a trailer. McGillney down the middle. Janssen stood him up. Janssen with a fine defensive play. Janssen in this series is the leader in ice time for Philadelphia. Almost 30 minutes played per game. Stela has had over 30 minutes leading Toronto in ice time because of all those overtimes. Into the middle, the drop shot just missed. Rip. They were looking for the setup in front. Andropov had cut through the middle, couldn't get to it. Tucker tries to center. Got it back. Nolan shot. Save made. Chekmanic knocked it away. Held in by Lume. Drops it back. Andropov, a forward moving back to cover the point. They cycle it along the near side boards. Deflected and blocked. Nobody can get a handle on it. Still loose. Flyers, Weinrich trying to clear it out. Denton Berg leaves it behind the net. And you're already seeing some of the mistakes we were referring to. They're happening here in the first period. Williams sends it in. And Gary, we've already seen Tony Amati and Owen Nolan rip shots at least two feet wide. Not getting them on net, something else you don't want to happen. You want every shot in this game to be on net. Or well, you're hardly going to beat it. You're hardly going to beat the goalie with the original shot. That hasn't happened very often, so at least get a rebound chance. Renberg set that one up in the middle. It is bounced wide by Robert Reichel. Reichel and Renberg have had a very fine series, probably a little better than anybody anticipated. Toronto still in the zone. Reichel, a nice play to get on side and then feed it back into the corner. Yaskevich took the hit as he tried to move it around. A shot on LeClaire. Puck still comes out the center. John LeClaire in the overtimes played only a little over five minutes in last night's game. Uh, that's surprising. Well, if nothing else, he has to be at fresh. His legs will be fresh, but Ken Hitchcock did not look as if he were, was really happy with the way John LeClaire came down the stretch in the third period so he didn't play it much in overtime I don't I don't think he's hurt no he's had one goal and one assist and it's looked fine but he's been out there on the ice at least physically back it comes to Terry and he's teamed up with Vandermeer cleared out into the middle Hansus was chasing Hansus held it in momentarily that goes the other way will be an icing call Terry and back on the touch game seven first period no score Voice message, press one or wait for the joke. I think I need my car back. I have to go to a meeting. Okay, Daddy, I'll be home in 10 minutes. Okay. But life's good when you're George Lopez. But life's better when you're George Lopez and you have the cell phone with a walkie talkie. Get right through. Next tell. Drinks before lunch? Uh, water's fine for me. Uh, water for me, too, but with lemon, please. I'll have a Sam Adams, please. Hmm. Make that two Sam Adams. Oh, I'll have a Sam also. Me, four. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Never miss an opportunity to enjoy a tasty Samuel Adams lager, especially when it's on someone else's tab. Samuel Adams, always a good decision. the man 
that's the goal. That's why we're here. And he's out here for insurance on the faceoff. I've yet to see a defensive zone faceoff in this series without the defending team having two centers out there. And Hansu beat Sundin on that draw. And he fell for it, came out to play and missed, played it. Centering pass lost behind the net. Donna Brachier was standing there and came away with a puck off Eddie Belfort's stick. Third back into the zone. Green. Ty Domi on the near side board. Held up by Chekmonic. Domi moved in. Couldn't get the hit on. Anzus drops it. Pass went behind. Right about Somic. Somic will send it into the zone. Somic playing just his second game. A back problem has kept him out of the series. But he has returned here tonight. So line changes for Philadelphia. Terrian sends it in. He got hit, but it was Green who got the worst of it. Belfort plays it around. Kapanen just off the bench. Held it in. Kapanen heading to the front. Return pass couldn't get there. Back up onto the point. Weimerts dropped the shot. Belfort. Kick out save. Johnson had the opportunity. He was open. That'll go by Check Monik and off to the near side for an icing call. If anything, the Flyers were guilty of being a little too hungry up front on this play. Good save by Ed Belfort and went Weinrich over to Janssen, but watch where the three Flyers are stationed for the rebound. They are all in pretty tight. Ed Belfort actually kicked the rebound out. See, nobody's between the hash marks in the medium slot to the high slot, and so often in this series, the, the rebound has actually come out past the rebound shooter. Sundin won that draw, trying to get it ahead for Roberts, could not. Weinrich out there to intercept it. Weinrich working with Janssen. They have been the big defensive pairing for Philadelphia. Captain left the shot. They made Bell four on Jeremy Roenick. What a night of hockey we have for you tonight on ESPN and ESPN2. At 10 Eastern on ESPN, the Minnesota Wild and the Colorado Avs, they're deciding game seven. At 10.30 Eastern on ESPN2, the Vancouver Canucks and the St. Louis Blues in Vancouver for their game seven. The Stanley Cup playoffs on ESPN presented by Nextel and the NHL Stanley Cup playoffs on ESPN2. Eddie Bell four with 82 playoff wins now, fourth most all time. And 4-0 and oh in Game 7 for Belfort. There to round by a Wesley. Sundin line remains out there. Roberts to Sundin. McGillney ahead of him. McGillney off the boards. Couldn't play it cleanly. Roberts overskated. Picked back up by Primo. Primo continues to draw assignments defensively against this scoring line of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Check Monik back to get him. The last time there were three Game 7s to be played in one day was 97. It has only happened now four times in NHL history. Almost stolen by Primo. Is stolen on the far side by Williams. Centered. Oh, and Nolan is there. Nolan drops it off. Nolan has had no goals and two assists so far in the series after he got seven goals in 14 games playing with Toronto coming over from the Sharks. After about shot is deflected to the near side and out. Nobody's going to touch this one up. They wave off the ice and Belfort came way out. Lume got back there. He was chased back deep into the zone. In the middle, Tucker. Tucker got it between the legs to avoid the hit by LeClaire. And Nolan will send it in and change up. Both teams may go to pretty quick line changes here early in this game. They pretty well have to. But it's going to be one of those passes from your corner into the middle of the ice inside your blue line that is going to jump over a stick and make people on benches gasp. Owen Nolan has something in this game that he hadn't been able to do in the three previous games in the series that were played here in Philadelphia. He's got a shot on goal. He did not have a shot in the first three games played in Philadelphia. He at least has one. He's ripped another one wide. Big thing is trying to relax, especially when you know you were the guy that was brought in to score the big goals. Relax. Try to enjoy the game. Try to do what you do best. Real easy to preach, really hard to practice. Mike Brecky will dump it back in, and he bell for it back to play it. 4 3 the shots in favor of the Flyers. Came off the far side wall. Tom Fitzgerald will move it out. Got the red line and sent it back in on the hard wraparound, which both teams have started out with in this game. Renberg for Fitzgerald. He couldn't get it. Robert Reichel does. Reichel tied up in the corner as he tried to send it deep. It'll be played on the far side by Vandermeer. Fitzgerald stole it. Fitzgerald sends it right back in. Renberg coming back to get it. That one on the far side to Recky. Recky will move it out. Chris Terry and Dr. Bullet there. He lost his stick. And I'll tell you, an inordinate number of times last night in game six, the Flyers players ended up without sticks. Sorry, Kai shot right to the net. First big chance. And interception and Hanzo's had it in front. Centers for LeClaire. LeClaire turns it back intended for Recky. And there is the first big time scoring chance in this game. All alone out in front on the errant pass. 
And they could not convert. Hansus had the opportunity. Wesley, Ty Domi, brought it back into his own end. Sends it off the boards. Nobody there for him. Weinrich will chase it down. Four three shots. Flyers with the advantage. The pace somewhat tentative as both teams try and get it to the front. Hansus off the fire wall. Couldn't connect. Still drove it back into the zone. Played back. The Cape's pass got blocked. On the right side is Bryce Shear. Somic trying to get it to him, but not. Here's Ty Domi. Flyers were changing. Domi trying to move it in. Punk checked away. He got double checked on that one. Bryce Shear shot over the head of Eddie Belfort. Back it comes to the point. Tony Yamani. Yamani just coming on the ice. Gets tied up. Sundin. Third it around, but not out. Off the near side, Rackerson. That one uh, deflected off players on the near side. Dot tied up Berg behind the net. Kapitan came in. Berg has lost his stick. Berg pinned up. Kapitan and then McKay cleared it out. Shot in offside. Flyers and Leafs no score. 9-14 left here. You're watching the Stanley Cup playoffs presented by Nextel. The 2003 NFL Draft. This Saturday and Sunday only on ESPN. Where we were planning our vacation online. That's when the pain started. Digititis is a repetitive stress injury, just like carpal tunnel syndrome, except different. Basically, it feels like a fleshy fireball on the end of my hand. We're seeing an explosion of this with all the double clicking that's going on. If we catch this early, we can help. Searching for a great airfare online doesn't have to be a pain. Just go to southwest.com for our $39 to $99 internet specials when you purchase by May 1st. You are now free to move about the country. Fill your glasses for a toast. Champagne? Good move. A quality beer drinker doesn't compromise a Samuel Adams lager. Always a good decision. You got to dump a lot of pucks in on any belt for before he misplays one. And he didn't misplay this one. It went over to Robert Svalen. He tried to put it back behind the net again. Instead, it caromed out in front. Close call for Michael Hansus. Hansus, the opportunity right there. Hansus has not had a goal in 29 playoff games. That'll be sent in by McGillney over to get it Roberts. Roberts avoided the check of Johnson, sends it back to Sundin. McGillney in front of the net. Back for Roberts. Roberts puts it back up onto the point. Lume, Lume, the wrister. Kicked to the side by Weinrich. Played by Ronick. Ronick trying to get it up to Amati. Kapanen was already on it. Centered. Sundin, though, held it in. Roberts, Chekmanic, blocked Roberts in its attempt to get to the uh, boards behind the net. And uh, Philadelphia clears. 8.38 left here in a scoreless first period. Toronto trying to recreate last year. They won two game sevens last year. They beat the Islanders in the quarterfinals and Ottawa in the semifinals. Both went to game seven. Ultimately would be eliminated in the conference final. Primo shot deflected wide of the net on Camberlain. Tucker over there had a piece of a flyer uniform. Came back to Primo on the near side. He took a hit that circled around by Svela. Pushed back onto the point and out of the zone. Dropped in the middle. Antropov over the blue line. Takes the shot. Check on it. The save. Played off the far side corner. Rackerson moves it out. Without a helmet, Primo. Primo stays out with his line here. Primo will go chase it in the corner. Kamale moving in on him. Primo uses the shoulder to protect. Centering pass on Eddie Belfour. He covers, and they didn't appreciate the fact Justin Williams stole on Belfour's back. Chill, boys. Chill. I mean, Williams didn't dive on his back intentionally, and, and regardless, this is, I mean, forget about being macho right now. It ain't going to get you anything but heartache. Both sides. One power play could be the difference in this game. You just don't know when. Well, there's going to be one. I think Williams did dive on his back intentionally. 
Maybe you know what that replay looked like he did fall that way. He saw he had a chance to get the belt for and he went at him. When I was saying go. when I was saying chill, I was saying chill on the lead part. No pros are going after him no matter what happens to your goalie. Well, that's a rough and call. It's not a goalie interference call. Five times the Flyers have been whistled for goalie interference in this series. Okay, I'm going to defer to you on all of these now. <laughs> Good call. Pile on. <laughs> Pile on. <laughs> uh, the uh, time of the penalty is 12-13, roughing on Williams. And here's the power play opportunity now for Toronto. They'll start in their own end. Power plays have been less than uh, awesome in this series for both teams. Toronto's gone three for 23. Here in Philadelphia, they're one for 13 on the power play. And cleared out of there by the Flyers. Tarion got it out. McKay drops it back. Roberts, Sundin, McGillney up front on the power play. Chuck Monick leaves it. Tarion goes to the middle. Can't get it out. Shot. Wesley save. No rebound. Toronto power play. Tomorrow night. Major League Baseball season continues ESPN ESPN 2 at 7 o'clock Albert Pujols and the Cardinals take on Gary Sheffield the Atlanta Braves that's on ESPN ESPN 2 Sean Green and the Dodgers Sean Casey and the Reds some may see the Mets and Astros all on Wednesday night baseball two centers out there for the Flyers now Primo and Ronick see if Sundin can stay hot on the draw as he got it there he just gave it to shot got blocked Sundin held it in came uh, back behind up the net this game is trying to clear it out of there. Second attempt to get it. In game six, it wouldn't have mattered if the Flyers had had eight centers out there. Matt Sundin was going to win the draw. He was awesome in game six. McCabe came back to get it. Power play has got a minute 11 left on it. Scoreless first period. Sundin, a blue line blast right back to it. His strong pass got deflected and it's cleared out. Matt Sundin tonight already is seven for eight on the faceoffs. Toronto has won 12 of 15. He is just red hot. He came in uh, among the leaders here in the playoffs, as you would expect, as far as faceoffs are concerned. Dragged back deeper into the zone, and shot out. Toronto changing up. Primo, short-handed. Belfort got there first. Michael Bob will take it back in behind the net. 39 seconds left on the Toronto power play. Game seven. Ottawa watching, waiting. They play the winner in round two. Jack Body coming up to get it. Cleared it up the boards. Svelo was waiting and held it in. After Poppel on the wall. Got taken off the puck. Svelo will move up, though, to hold it. Svelo sends it wide side down to 19 on the advantage. Svelo's wide open. Chooses not to take it. Weinrich broke up the pass. Weinrich moves it out to center. What a great read by Eric Weinrich, who I thought was the Flyers' best player in game six. After Pop again. Pass came to center. And yeah, that's going to be whistled. They've had some chances to shoot the puck. There's Eric Weinrich, who may be playing the best hockey of his 15-year career. Well, the penalty killer deserve a huge round of applause. A lot of it's hard work. Smart play at the same time. There is Nick Antropov. What a boost he gave his team in game six. And as the Flyers have started to fall, the Leafs have gotten healthier. Broke his foot in game one, came back in game six. A big man from Kazakhstan logged more ice time than any other Leaf forward except Owen Nolan. 30 minutes with a broken foot, having been off the ice for 12 days. No score here. Hi, hey, Tito. I hope you enjoy the empanadas and Coke. Love, Mom. Aw. Hey, man. Something smells good. Hi, Tito. <sighs> hey, man. What? Explore Magrack today. It's not on satellite TV. It's on Insight Digital Cable. From Harleys to Hondas, Motorcycle Freedom puts you on the road with the world's hottest bikes. And uncork the secrets of winning wines on Wine World. Magrack has dozens of video magazines made just for you. Start them anytime. Even pause, rewind, and fast forward. Best of all, with Insight Digital Cable, you get Magrack at no extra charge. Call today. Do not attempt to adjust your set. The screensavers have taken control. Every day, we 
Radio Pat and the gang tackle your tough questions, bringing you the cool new stuff, tech news, and special guests. Get up, get on up, get on up. Give me a break. Taking computer help to the next dimension. The Screen Savers, weeknights at 7, only on Tech TV. in game seven all-time goal leaders Messier and two in this game McGilney and Jeremy Roenick the ones you look for Alexander McGilney Jeremy Roenick a lot of game seven sevens going on here Yurke Lume Robert Reichel Gary Roberts are all playing in their seventh game seven along with Alexander McGilney only one on the flyer side is Keith Primo. He's their leader in game seven. It is his seventh. And he's had a couple of goals. There's back along the near side boards. Brashier knocked it away. And hits the linesman on the attempted move in by Jonas Holton. Back to get a Vandermeer. Vandermeer and Ty Domi on him. Left it behind the net. Up the near side boards and again out. You see how careful these teams are being, especially the defensive. Whenever they feel they may be in a difficult situation, get rid of it, even if it's icy. Jimmy Vandermeer is playing his second playoff game in the NHL lifetime. He got the start last night in Toronto and got rocked by Tommy Fitzgerald. That tells you how much confidence Ken Hitchcock has in young Jim Vandermeer. He truly believes he's going to be a terrific NHLer for many years to come. But after, and you know what, Jim Vandermeer looked nervous even up until he got cranked in game six. Here's Ken Hitchcock right back with him. Great confidence. Yep. And uh, happy that there was no concussion problems for Vandermeer after that shot he took. The end of the middle. Puck just kind of died out there. Ronick leaves it. Amati, fanned on it. Played back up by Iskevich and out. Played back. Bob LaPointe. They get back on side. Weinrich again to Ronick. Ronick sends it in. Took the hit from McCabe. Amati, a partial hit there. He got more of the boards than he did the man. Roberts leaves it back out. You're seeing a lot of this first line of Toronto set back in with Roberts and McGillney and Sundin as they look for these elusive game seven goals. Johnson got it to Amani. Amani turns it. Center ice. Cabinet a little wrong moves it in. He's open. Cabinet fakes, waiting for help. Shot that one around the back of the net. Williams able to get it. Williams looking for Primo in front. Comes all the way around. The D cutting through the slot. Can't get the pass there. Only one back along the point. Held in by Escape. Off the near side. Antropov got it out of there. And uh, could have another icing call. No, they wave it off. It never went far enough down ice. Ragnarsson dropped it off on the far side. Escape it just passed. Tucker got a part of it. Not enough to hold it in the zone. Big back up and uh, just sent in again by Primo. Eddie Belfour back to get it. Andres Svela held it by Primo. Williams centered shot. Score! Save it from Gagne! The big man on the line is Keith Primo. He started the four-check with the dump in. Then he turned it over to the two speedsters, the burners, Justin Williams and Simon Gagne. And with quick puck movement following the four-check, the Flyers take a 1-0 lead from our Southwest Airlines goal cam. As perfect as Eddie Belfour's form has been in this series, he couldn't get his form in shape quickly enough to guard against the shot from Gagne. Each of these teams has won two and lost one when they have scored first. But a final first goal in Game 7 goes to the Flyers. Simon Gagne in a 1-0 lead as they get it on their fifth shot of the game. Back for Berg. Berg over to Lume. Lume to the ring. Sends that one down the boards and in. Vandermeer back to get it. Vandermeer cleared it up along the wall. Still there. Lume pinched in to try and help hold it in. Came back onto the point of the center. And Gary, of all the players on the Flyers roster, I don't think anybody comes alive more than Simon Gagne when he gets a goal early in a game. I got a feeling he's going to be a factor again. Gagne's third of this series, 11th playoff goal, 16-23. Williams and Primo pick up the assists on the goal. Right back out, Ty Domi. 
dummy centering pass. Didn't have anybody there. They couldn't get through. Viscavich came to get it. Tipped back up to the point, but not out. Leslie held it in all along. Green in front. Domi tried to get it to him, but it was deflected away. Toronto had a man open in the middle, but couldn't get the puck there. Brashier held up by Domi behind the play, and that's going to create the offside. Ken Hitchcock retooled two of his lines. One of them he did not. Two of them he didn't. One of them was the primo line that just scored this. Ed Belfort with his attempt at clearing pass on the backhand went right by his defenseman, Robert Spela, and right back to Primo. So Ed Belfort twice in this game, and I don't know, I, I think I can count on one hand the number of times Ed Belfort has made bad decisions with the puck in this series. Twice tonight he has already. And that one a costly mistake. Roberts trying to move through. McGillney skated by him. They hustle back in a three on three. Weinrich, the defenseman, moves it up. Tapping and heads to the net. Got blocked to the near side board. Off the wall, Roney held it in. McGillney's got it. McGillney will move it up. McGillney for Sundin. They can't connect. Johnson held up Sundin. Kegmani came up to play the puck into the middle. Kaplan. Kaplan can turn it on a dime. Over to Amani. Amani off for Roney. Held the line. He'll change up. Robert Svela goes back to get it. Spela, three assists so far in this series. No goal. Ragnarsson dropped it, gets it back. 1.30 left to go, first period. Game seven, that one's going to be sent in and whistled on a two-liner. And now Primo gets into it in front of the net with Nolan. I'll tell you what, they both wanted to throw a punch, but neither wanted to make the trek to the sin bin. We're just going to have to settle for a verbal assault. Here's what happened on the play. Owen Nolan kept jabbing Keith Primo, and Primo said, Why, I ought to. I don't like that very much. It kind of hurts. Well, we've said this before in the series. The lead hasn't meant that much because eight times leads have vanished. But that said, the Flyers' strength is defense. They tied the New Jersey Devils for the best defensive record in the NHL. They can play to their strength better with the lead. No question. I couldn't agree more, Bill. This, this first goal matters more than a first goal in any other game. Well, in especially, the especially for the home team in a game seven because the crowd just, I mean, they're, they're going to continue to sizzle. And for a defensive home team, Williams trying to move it out. The puck rolled away. Into the corner, Tucker. Nolan had lost his stick, had to go back to get it, so he couldn't help on the puck. One minute left to go in the first period. Knocked away near side again. It's uh, moved up by LaPointe. LaPointe into the middle, centered. Back at Williams. And what a play by little number 13, Claude LaPointe. Watch this. He battled his way through two leaves, had to get by another stick. He was hoping for a deflection. Give me a piece of something. He got a piece of pay dirt. He had x-ray vision on that play to avoid the check, and it did look like it went in off the stick of Justin Williams to give the Flyers a 2 to nothing lead with less than a minute to go in hey, period back, number one. Back-breaking late-minute, last-minute goal. And Williams played that perfectly by keeping his stick down on the ice. The official still over here at the table, and I'm not sure why. Whatever it is, they get it taken care of. Might have been a quick review just to see if it was kicked in, but the, there was no kicking. A 2 nothing lead for the Flyers here in the first. The only team in the playoffs to overcome that deficit. The Toronto Maple Leafs in game three. Now they've got to try and do it in game seven. Cleared back near side by Wesley. 32 seconds left to go in the period. Primo out there battling behind the play with some ferocious checks. Renberg down the middle. Trying to drop it in on net and a penalty coming on Weinrich. The goal at 19.08. Williams gets his first ever playoff goal. LaPointe gets the assist for the 2 0 lead, but with 21 seconds to go in the period. Really two minutes for holding. Flyers a short of man. Well, this is the way game six went as well. Eric Weinrich almost looked like he got trapped into a hole that he didn't want there. His stick got wrapped up. 
but he didn't release his stick. He might have been able to get away with it if he just released and gotten off the back, but he never did. I want to remind you our Southwest Intermission Report. John and Barry, they'll have the Wild Ass preview. Same with the Blues Canucks. Intermission interview, Chris from Philadelphia. Power play. McGillney leaves it down low. They could get one here with that be a comeback for him. McGillney shot. That deflected off Yuskevich. Kept in by Caverle. Power play with five seconds left on it. McGillney looking into the middle. Fakes dropped it there. Got blocked. Back to the boards by Yuskevich, and that'll end the period. With a minute 39 left on the Leafs power play. But it's been a Philadelphia first period game seven. 16-23. Gagne's third of this series. 19-08. William gets his Williams gets his first ever playoff goal. And the Flyers have a two to nothing lead. This real deal moment brought to you by Baby Root. Stick one directly into your intake valve. Baby Root from Nestle, the real deal. Satisfy all your cravings with Taco Bell's cheesy gordita crunch. Mmm, crunchy. Warm, pillowy flatbread. Mmm, chewy. Covered in three melted cheeses. Cheesy. All wrapped around a crunchy taco and topped with a zesty pepper jack sauce. Empty. To get the cheesy gordita crunch, think outside the bun. This real deal moment brought to you by Baby Root. Take this out to the ball game. Baby Root from Nestle, the real deal. Drinks before lunch? Uh, water's fine for me. Uh, water for me too, but with lemon, please. I'll have a Sam Adams, please. Hmm. Make that two Sam Adams. Oh, I'll have a Sam also. Me four. <laughs> nice. Never miss an opportunity to enjoy a tasty Samuel Adams lager, especially when it's on someone else's tab. Samuel Adams, always a good decision. This real deal moment brought to you by Baby Ruth. Wake up and smell the peanuts. Baby Ruth from Nestle, the real deal. Introduce a new body wash from Old Spice. Put my love to the test. It has a dual action formula, so you'll get really clean, smell really great. Hey, then. Need help with your anatomy homework? New body wash from Old Spice. Two hundred and eighty horsepower SR two thirty sport boat from Yamaha. Welcome to the Southwest Airlines Intermission Report. Young legs getting it done for the Flyers. Simone Gagne, Justin Williams, two nothing Philly, Game Seven against Toronto. With Barry Melrose, I'm John Butchergrass. A frustrating year for Simone Gagne since he won the gold medal last February for Canada. Uh, groin problems all year long, but boy, he was big in that first period. Both those guys are hurt at the end of the year. That's right. Simone Gagne won the goals with Chris Simpson. Well, Simone Gagne, you knew the Leafs were hoping to build on the momentum of the big win last night. How important was it for you guys to get that first goal? Uh, I think very important for us. Uh, we know what will happen last night. We're kind of come here and have the the momentum a little bit on their side and so uh, it was very important for us to, to get that first goal and uh, we're very happy right now to get two goals for us. What does Ken Hitchcock say before a game like this or really does he have to say much at all? Well we know uh, last game uh, uh, we didn't play the, the way we're supposed to play and uh, 
uh, just this morning was just to play the, the way we, we play when we win a hockey game, and uh, that's what we're doing right now. And uh, But we have to do it for 60 minutes, not only for 20 minutes. You take a two-goal lead into the second. Uh, what should we expect in the next 20 minutes? Uh, I play the same way. Uh, like I said, uh, need 60 minutes to win a hockey game. Uh, right now we, we play well for uh, for the first 20. We still have 40 minutes to go, so uh, play the same way and uh, keep uh, working hard. Simone Gagné, thanks for this. You're welcome. Thanks. Two more Game 7s to come tonight. The next one, Colorado home to Minnesota, Barry. And uh, no one thought this one would go sub between these two. No, no one thought. But again, goaltending is equalizer. John and Manny Fernandez has outplayed Patrick Waugh the last two games. It's unbelievable that this happened. This guy's come out of nowhere. He didn't even start the series for Minnesota. But in the last two games, he's been spectacular. I thought last game he didn't have to be as good because Minnesota was better in Game 6. In Game 5, I thought he was super. But he made key saves at key times. He gave his team a chance to win going into the third period. It didn't quite work out. Somehow Colorado caught up, but he didn't panic. Played well in overtime. Got a lot of help from a guy like Richard Park, who scored two goals. So uh, Manny Fernandez is a story. Who would have thought he can outplay Patrick Watt three times? If he does, Minnesota will win this series probably. See if Sakic and Forsberg begin the game They better together. show up. They better show up. Tonight. Meanwhile, Adam Fort, of course, the heart and soul of that Colorado defense. Will he play? Some feel he has a broken foot barrier after taking a slap shot in game five. Here he is walking into the arena. I, if you can walk, you think he would play. John, if he can get a skate on tonight without making his injury worse, this might hurt you, but you can't hurt it situation, he will be in the lineup. They'll take care of him. They'll dull the pain. That guy will be in the lineup if he can get a skate on. Jason Smith of Edmonton play with a broken foot yep. against Dallas. Bobby Bond scored a goal with a broken foot. Absolutely. Expect foot to be in there. Here it is. ESPN, of course, you're watching game one of our doubleheader. Here's game two. 10 o'clock Eastern, 7 Pacific. Wild and Avalanche from Denver. This intermission report, presented by Southwest Airlines, the official airline of the National Hockey League. Welcome to Bugle Burger. Can I help you? I'm number, number two in a nice tea. A company will be in the capable hands of Francis Skip. Skip. Hancock the third. Son. I'm so stoked. Dump it. Sell it. All of it. Ever wonder how the world's largest brokerage houses can reach millions of their customers just when it matters most? They rely on the world's most capable networking company. Out. You're out. Great, thanks. AT&T. Why are there so many microphones? Hey, guys. Hey, hey what's up, man? Well? Well, what? Aren't you going to say something? About what? Forget it. What's the matter? I can't believe I changed my hair and you guys don't even notice. You're not a woman. Why use a woman's gel? Introducing Suave for Men's Sport Gel. Holds just as good as her brand for half the price. New Suave for Men. A.J. Foyt's father passed his craftsman tools on to his son. Some of my father's tools are a little bit older than I am. Who's passing them on to his son. We still use a lot of, a lot of his tools out there to this day. Who will one day pass them on to his son. You know, it's just amazing that they were that good back then, and then they're still the best today. Dad yeah, knew they'd last at least four lifetimes. 1,600 hand tools made in America. Guaranteed forever. Craftsman. Sears. Where else? is the Southwest Airlines Intermission Report. Three game sevens tonight. This one on ESPN2, Blues and Canucks. Al McGinnis flew to Vancouver and Barry. 
If he flew to Vancouver, you know he's playing in Vancouver. Boy, his arms must be tired, but you're going to see him skate this morning uh, in warm-up. You see the injury when Bertuzzi hit him. He has not played since then. Uh, no one thought he'd be back for this series, but not everyone thought this series was going to go seven games. He went to the rink. He showed up. He was skating. They're going to miss this guy drastically, but if he can come into the lineup, John, and just his presence alone, a 50% Al McGinn is better than most defensemen in the NHL. So get this guy in the lineup, even if it's just for the power play, even if it's just to get Vancouver to prepare for him in the lineup, which will take some heat off Pronger and Bear Jackman and the other guys. His sweater is in his yeah. locker. We'll see if he does indeed play. Okay, we see a Toronto team that sometimes have discipline issues. Yeah. St. Louis is the Toronto of the West in that regard. Can they be focused tonight? This series has really taken a change. Vancouver was the indiscipline team early in the series. They took the bad penalties. St. Louis scored in the power play up late. The last two games especially it's been the St. Louis Blues bear being very undisciplined, taking bad penalties, and the Vancouver Canucks scoring on the power play. You've got to be disciplined now. You've got to take a shot in the yap. The way to hurt the opposition is to beat them. That's the only thing. It doesn't matter about slashing. It doesn't matter about yapping. Make them pay a price. Just keep your mouth shut. Skate away. Let them do whatever they want to you. At the end of the night, whoever wins the game will be the victor. So whichever team is most disciplined, that's going to go a long way for winning this game, John. And too much Milan goaltenders. We'll yes, see who is. goes on. Second period from Philly is on the way. The Flyers, Williams and Gagne, the goals, have a 2-0 lead. Good morning. Good morning. Hiring that mascot to promote your new breakfast bar was a great idea. Yeah. Cinnamon rolls! Get them on a hot, hot, hot! Go, 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 go! Get your cinnamon rolls! Let's go, 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 go! Cinnamon rolls! He doesn't Get them on work a hot, here. Hot, 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 hot. Go, 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 go! Oh, hot and delicious, hot and delicious cinnamon rolls, cinnamon rolls! <laughs> Somewhere, a manager needs someone to deliver a 12-ounce sirloin and a slab of baby backs to the couple at table five. Chop, chop. Nearby, a friendly server needs a good job. That's where we come in. Employers call 888-MONSTER, post your job, and find the right person for it. Because now, blue collar, white collar, no collar. Monster works for everybody. Third and long once again for the Texans. Carr brings the offense to the line. The Cowboys front four has been all over the rookie. What does your team need? The NFL Draft. Boomer, Mel Kuyper Jr. and the crew bring you 17 hours, 32 teams, all 262 picks because every round counts. The 2003 NFL Draft presented by Coors Life. This Saturday and Sunday only on e this is Computer A. It uses InsightBB.com, the new high-speed broadband internet access. Computer B uses ordinary dial-up service. A is always on and ready to take you to the internet. Computer B has to wait. Computer A is up to 100 times faster than <coughs> Computer B. And A frees up a phone line. So there you are. Fast, direct, and convenient, or slow, indirect, and frustrating. How do you want to reach the internet? InsightBB.com. Instant internet. Ford F-150, America's number one truck for 26 straight years. And if you look again at F-150, it's obvious why. It's built Ford tough. And now, own an F-150 for just $258 a month with zero down. F-150, the truck that comes with more torque than Silverado, Ram, or Tundra, is now just $258 a month with zero down. And you own it. If you haven't looked at Ford lately, look again. Only at your Indiana Ford store. Southwest Airlines intermission report there. There were rumors that the Flyers could have had a Ginla for Williams and Gagne. Good thing. Uh, Gagne and Williams are fast, John. That's what's scary at this time of the season when you're a little bit tired if you're a Toronto defenseman. Toronto begins the second period on a power play, but down 2 nothing. This intermission report presented by Southwest Airlines, the official airline of the National Hockey League. Carr brings the offense to the line. It's third and long once again for the Texans. What does your team need? Watch the 2003 NFL Draft on ESPN because every round counts. This Saturday and Sunday only on ESPN. See the most phenomenal international athletes from six world regions compete at the first ever X Games Global Championship. Presented by Too Fast, Too Furious. Beginning May 17th on ESPN, ESPN2, and ABC Sports. Too fast. 
ass. You ready for this? I was made for this. On June 6th. It's not what you drive. Why do we settle this now? We settle this on the blacktop. It's how you live. I got a problem with authority. Too fast, too furious. How you like that? Rated PG-13. One of 12 rounds is all about stamina. That's why I like high endurance from Old Spice. No deodorant protects better. And it lasts longer because it evaporates more slowly. Want proof? If you're not convinced, Old Spice will buy you a stick of your old stuff. Let me put it this way. High endurance lasts longer than I do. I'm working on that. Thanks to available x ray sport suspension, windy roads struggle to make it sway. Because of its standard 245 horsepower engine, tough terrain has difficulty slowing it down. And with so many safety and performance refinements, steep mountains often fail to hold it back. The all-new Forerunner. No other SUV has ever been on its terrain. Hey, uh, Veronica? Yeah? Would you like to go to McDonald's with me? Um, no, I wouldn't, Steve. <laughs> it's Sam. Whatever. <laughs> I'll go, Sam. Wow. McDonald's and a man like you? A girl would be crazy to pass that up. That was really cool, Aunt Tiffany. <laughs> Boy. At a giant store that sells anything, you might find yourself a lawn tractor. But you'll also find Timmy. Awesome! At your neighborhood dealer, you'll get a friendly nice. face, expert advice, nice. great service, uh -huh. and the outstanding performance of Simplicity and Snapper products, powered by Briggs & Stratton engines. So visit your neighborhood dealer so and prepare think? to be impressed. Awesome. Stanley Cup Playoffs on ESPN, presented by Nextel. This ESPN exclusive presentation brought to you by Hershey's Milk and Milkshakes. Intensely chocolate, intensely Hershey's. The great traditions in hockey. Philadelphia, 27 years without a cup, fourth most. Toronto, 35 years without a cup, second most. Only to the Chicago Blackhawks. And tonight, somebody will add another year to that, the loser. A chance for the Roberts McGillney Sundin line to get going. They're on the power play. Have not picked up a point in the last 12 periods after lighting it up in the first 14 periods of this series. But now Toronto's got a power play. Power play continues here. Minute 33 left on it. Philadelphia goals on their final two shots of the period. The two goals came just 245 apart to take the lead. Roberts moves it in. Already 0 for 1 on the power play tonight. Sundin dropped it on the point near side Cavalier. Caroline ships it around behind the net. Robert Sundin and again the outfit. Kapanen moved over on Sundin. Held in by Spaley. Got it into the corner. Could be handled. Near side. Big flip out of the zone. Big clear. The board by Ragnarsson. Delcourt came out to get it. Caroline has got it. Left it back in his own end to Roberts. To McGillney. Blocked. Way offside on the right side was Roberts. But if there's any, any team, one team in the NHL that I could pick as, as the team that has faced adversity and done the best job at it over the last couple of playoff years, it has been the Toronto Maple Leafs. Their run last year with Pat Quinn behind the bench was incredible. In this series, they have shown that they're a resilient bunch. They really have to be resilient now here in this second period. The goals by Gagne from Williams and Primo at 16-23. And Williams from the point in 1908 have given the Flyers a 2-0 lead here in game seven. The attempt to dump in. Leslie never got it there. Primo back. Johnson. Carrion. Players. Power plays got 28 seconds left on. Take it back behind the net. McCabe. One more rush up ice. Owen Nolan has come out. Reichel Renberg on the power. Uh, no. Atropov stays out on it. He leaves it on a point. Leslie. 
McCabe on the blue line. Wesley down to 10 left on the advantage. Flyers staying back. Right shot got blocked. Just shot that one right in the hands of Belfort up to play it. Over to Glenn Wesley. Both teams change into the zone. And the Pops drop pass came back to the point. McCabe. Power plays over. Toronto did not get a shot on their second power play of the game. In the middle, the wrister goes up and over the net. Andropov had the opportunity just as he was heading off the ice and he had a shift. Back in behind the net, Eddie Belfort leaves it. Berg there to get it. Berg with Primo moving up on it. Nobody for either team in that first period had more than one shot on goal. We've only had 11 total shots in this game in a series in which Philadelphia, by a very wide margin, has upshot the Toronto Maple Leafs. Lume had it, lost it. Green came over for Toronto. Primo ties him up. Poke check away. Green picks it up, trying to move it in. Push it off the far side. Force had nobody there. Attempt to clear. Green, and that one went off the blocker. Save made by Jack Body. Got a turnover that Green tried to dump in to get the Leafs on the board. Boy, did Fitzgerald ever get crushed into the wall by Yuskevich. Philadelphia changing into the zone. Fitzgerald shot. Save made by Jack Monick again. Sent back behind the net. Redberg over to get it by Shear. Bryce here, Philadelphia just completing the change. Solmik got the pass off. Yuskevich fakes, takes it off the glove of Eddie Belfort, and then he batted it while he was in the air. Puck sits along the line. Played up near side. Solmik tried to block it, could not. Chance on the near side. Renberg will move it in. Renberg looking. Take down in front of the net. He had nobody to go to in front. Good play uh, made by Terrian. Terrian knocked down the flyer heading into the uh, the leap heading into the middle. Terrian a chance. Belfour a save. Rebound. Belfour hangs on. Hansus for the rebound. Well, this is Eddie Belfour with time to set up his form. Get down on his butterfly, and he's just a wall when he gets there. Chris Terrian with a good shot selection here just to get it off quickly and as hard as he could. The drop from Somic, the quick release from Terrian looking for a rebound. There was a tiny one, but it wasn't very big. And unless it's far up and far out enough, you've got no angle to get it by Belfort. One thing about Belfort, when he gives up a rebound, he either pushes it past the guy that's trying to pick it up, or he just leaves it right in front of himself so he can get it with his glove. Jeremy Roney tried to kick that draw ahead, so it was cleared in by McGildy. Weinrich coming back to get it. Weinrich taken out of the play by Roberts. McGildy in the corner, pinned up by Kapanen. Weinrich reaches in, found the puck, got it out of there to Johnson. Johnson over to Tony Amon. Amon into the zone, stood up near side by Glenn West. Chased down by Roney to Amon. Amon looking, Kapanen in front. Amon, Belfour trying to watch the puck behind him. Amon dribbles it, still waiting. Comes to the front, shot, deflected. Trying to push that one right through uh, Roenick and Wesley, good do it. He was waiting for Jeremy Roenick to set up the pick. Once it was set, he came out. Back it comes to Weinrich. Weinrich drops it down low. Roenick, a big time effort behind the net to free that puck up. Big tie up in front. Roberts tied up with Roenick. They're in a shoving match down there as play comes up to center. No whistle on it, they separate. Both teams trying to get a line change in. Dump in by Tony Amati, take it back by Bird. Aki Berg flipped out as Toronto was coming over with the forwards on the chain. Johnson back on the touch for the icing call. Well, the tower of power for the Flyers on the blue line in this series to me has been Eric Weinrich. With Eric Desjardins out of the lineup with a broken foot, he has had to be huge. Watch as the play goes into the far corner here. Eric Weinrich is on the left, comes up to the pile along the boards. He's got three Leafs over there, and he just picks the puck out of the pile very calmly made a play to his open D partner and out came the Flyers. The little plays have been terrific by Weimer. He leaves Philadelphia on ice time, 9.15 through the first period. Can't uh, move it. Nolan now will turn it the other way. Sends it off the near side for Berg. Berg into the zone. And Chagmonic will cover that one up with Tucker moving in. Five minutes into period number two, the Flyers maintaining their 2-0 lead in this game seven. You ever want a little video clip of driving the net? Roll tape on this one on the left of the screen. Marcus Ragnarsson backing up, backing up, going down. Darcy Tucker arriving at the paint without making any contact on Roman Chekmonik. 
There are the numbers for Tucker. Off the faceoff, it'll be won by the Flyers. Primo won it. Third around by Ragnarsson. Bounce pass off the wall. Williams engaged in the ground. Murray got back there to cover. Williams tipped it, came right back to it. Lost it, sight of the net. Belfort, that was close on that short side post. Philadelphia getting some action down low. Primo, Primo, Williams. Cycling in the corner, Williams over. And the pop came over. Primo cutting back. Puck underneath, backhand shot. Deflected just wide. Backhand chance and a whistle coming. Gagne almost. He's calling, another. he's calling a goal. Is, is it a hold or what? I, I can't tell what Don Parowski's calling here. He's calling a hold. I think he was trying to wave off the goal because it looked like it hit the post or the crossbar. But Gagne with a chance to make it a 3 0 game. Here, Primo, great oh, work. Toronto, minor penalty holding. Off the crossbar for Gagne. Big. Pete Primo scored. Doesn't count. Belfort was able to follow him across, and when he finally went down, I'll tell you what, Gagne has shown just great hands and great patience in front of him by Belfort. Penalty in front of the net goes uh, Lume on the holding call at 5.22. Philadelphia gets their first power play of the game. Recky moves it in. LeClaire, Recky got a step shot. Belfort. LeClaire trying to find a little run. Belfort covered it up along the ice. Philadelphia's gone four for 27 in the series. Here at home, all four of their power play goals scored here on their home ice in this series. Hansus heads to the front. Johnson with it. Johnson across the middle. Shot. The ball most deflected in. Belfour again diving. Able to knock that puck away. Recky, Recky leaves it. Side of the net. The player. Delayed call coming. Another penalty on Toronto. I don't know if Hansus knows this. They should give it to the Leafs right here. They want to give it up. Get that extra skater shot off Belfour's blocker. All this time. Time's running on the two-man advantage potential. Here's the whistle. Looks like, uh, is he counting up for two men? <laughs> I can't figure I think out. Eddie Belfort but I think Belfort chopped somebody in front of I, the net. I saw the chop, but then I saw what looked like Don Carson. goaltender, 20, minor penalty slash. Thanks, Don Koharski. I love how animated Don Koharski is, but sometimes he's so animated I can't figure out the second part of it. Oh, man, that is a big time chop from our Southwest Airlines goal cam. The chop was on John LeClaire. Eddie Belfort has been a picture of composure in this series. Single-handedly drawn five goalie interference penalties. Flyers have headed to the penalty box, but this time it goes against Belfort. Two-man advantage for a minute, six seconds if needed. 6-17, the slash on Belfort. Flyers two up in the skating department. Ronick won it back onto the point. Back for Janssen. Reggie's playing up along the blue line here. Tony Amati. Janssen, the only defenseman out there on the power play. Reggie leaves it. Capital looking in the high slot. Reggie a chance. Save Belfort. Skip over the stick of the Flyers in front. Capital and clear. Reggie comes back to get it. 43 left on the two man advantage for Philadelphia. Poked ahead. McKay passes too hard. Blocked to the near side wall. Takes that. Toronto bounce. Wesley will just back it into the zone. McCabe will find a little Roman ship. Sundin sends it on net. Jack Matic had to knock it away. Down to 23 on the two men. Jeremy Ronick winding it up. Ronick, Kappen, and Amati up front on the power play unit. Ronick, center for try. Came back to it. Amati goes back on top. Recky moves over to the near side point now. Two man advantage. Johnson. Amadi's now in the high slot, pass to it, and the clock broke it up, can't clear it out. Now it's a 5 on 4, shot wide, rebound, right behind Eddie Belfour. 5 on 4 power play, Captain set it up, shot up oh. the outside of the net, Romick had two chances. The first one went behind Eddie Belfour and through the paint, that one went off the outside of the net. 39 left in the power play, Johnson, far side, Romick looking back, Johnson a shot. Didn't get it, hit off the heel of the stick. Pick back up, Glenn Wesley. He'll move it out, short-handed. They need a line change here. Corrado, gonna run off some time. Talk about surviving. Eddie Belfort was acrobatic. It's usually with his form. That time it was with his athleticism. Here comes Primo. Shot, save Belfort. There was a rebound, but he covers it up. Ten left on the advantage. Well, we talked.
talked about Toronto being able to bend without breaking. A three to nothing lead against the Flyers would be a huge lead. Oh, Jeremy Roenick put it right through. I don't know if he was trying to score, trying to bank it in off Belfort, or trying to get it to Kapanen. Hit right off his backside and then went through the other way. I think that might be as much frustration as it is pain on the face of Jeremy Roenick. Up to the point. Skavich held it in. Centering pass. Three seconds left in the power play. Primo centered shot. have a three to nothing lead here halfway through game seven right at the end of that penalty that puck went in they have gone off McGillney we'll see who they give uh, credit to you saw who Gagne gave credit to and it was Primo and Primo was the first guy over to the Flyers bench to go down the line banging gloves with everybody Fitzgerald Fitzgerald in with Renberg Tip. that one goes wide opportunity on the deflection by Michael Renberg now Toronto in a very deep hole, down three nothing, almost midway through this game seven. Lume takes it behind the net, 15-9. The shots on the game in favor of Philadelphia. Eddie Belfort a bouncing puck, and again the Flyers start to spread out the shots and the scoring chances in their favor. Redbird goes wide with it. They give it to Pete Primo. So Primo will be credited. With the goal, their third. Back into the zone, Recky. He's got room, leaves a shot deflected. It was a bouncing puck. Would not sit. John LeClaire came down the left wing. Yaskevich able to hold it in. Played behind the net. LeClaire's working. Comes around, takes the shot. Belfour will hang on. Primo's goal at 8-18. Williams and Yaskevich pick up the assist. Primo gets his first in 25 playoff games. complete the journey, you will find your destiny among the world's greatest warriors. The few, the proud, the Marines. That's an in leader of the Toronto Maple Leafs. And the task now daunting, a Flyers 3-0 lead. And it's 10.25 to go in the second period. Toronto has to keep banging, knock people off pucks. They've been just a wonderful physical team in this series. That is part of the reason they have succeeded three times in winning games. They can't stray from that now. That'll be sent into the zone. Now the Flyers will dump and force Toronto to come the full length of the ice here at every opportunity. McCabe, he sends it in. Terry and back to get it. Terry tied up. By our side. He intercepted momentarily. Oakland had it. Green gets it back. That will be whistled on the hand pass. And the faceoff will come outside the zone. 
Game seven. Who faces Ottawa? Flyers. They've got the lead. Three nothing for the moment. ESPN the magazine on newsstands now. That's me, but actually, I got a guy in the corner, a big producer. What's his name? I don't know. You sure it's not written there? Ooh, it's my agent in New York. Life's good when you're Eric McCormick. Hey, it's me. I mean, LA. The producer we had that meeting with last week, what's his name? Max Hoffman. Max Hoffman. Thank you very much. But life's better when you're Eric McCormick and you have the cell phone with a walkie talkie. Coast to coast walkie talkie service coming soon, only from Nextel. This shot for the cop and a piece of hurling history. What must be going through that young man's head? Young man's head, young man's head. Has he got what it takes to be a champion? Eight out of nine Toyota cars get over 30 miles per gallon. So what does that mean to you? I'm going to Omaha. A road trip to New Hampshire. Los Angeles, Phoenix. San Diego, Phoenix. I'm going to drive to Alvin's Ranch in Montana. Cleveland! With so many fuel-efficient cars, like the Prius Hybrid, you can drive anywhere in a Toyota. One more thought, don't forget the map. No maps. Value begins with Toyota quality. NHL GameCast, live scoring, shot charts, game stats, the best way to follow every Stanley Cup playoff game. It's available ESPN.com and NHL.com. 11-4, the shots here in this second period in favor of the Flyers. They've added to their lead. It was not a power play goal. Came after the time of the penalty had expired on that third goal that Primo picked up. That one sent the length of the ice. Wesley going back to get it. And Wesley will touch that one up for the icing call. Going to go back and take another look at the Keith Primo goal that has made it a three to nothing Flyers hockey game. On the left of the screen, watch Alexander McGillney. That is him in blue. Gagne never did touch the puck, and Alexander McGillney, I, I, I don't know what he was trying to do. I think he might have been able to just slide this, trying to slide it to Eddie Belfour for the cover, but Belfour wasn't ready for it. Wow. That's uh, one of those mistake goals we talked about so much they wave off any icing Belfour played it back up Sundin line out there both of these teams extended themselves financially to get themselves what they believe would be the players to help them win and move deep into the playoffs if not to the cup before this thing ever started there was no question that somebody was going to have spent a lot of money to exit in the first round <laughs> Something bad was going to happen to one of these franchises. Absolutely. Cleared back by Caberlake. Roberts has it. Uh, trying to get it to him, rather, in the middle. Played up Sundin in the middle. McGillney, Roberts, shot. Up and over. Did Czechmanek get a piece of that with a leg up in the air? He may have. Well, then Czechmanek sliding, stuck the leg up. And it looks like he may have deflected that. I think he did get a piece of it. Big bang in front as Primo got level, turned around, saw it was Roberts. Now the sticks are getting up as Primo, as he went by, had McCabe wave at him with his blade. Penalties on Toronto. Wheels may be coming off the playoff wagon. One more goal and they are officially off. And Watch this save. We think it hit Chekmonic's pad. We'll give him full marks for his acrobatic style here. It may have nicked off the blocker. If it didn't, then Gary Roberts just shot high. But we saw Roman Chekmonic put on his acrobatic act in game six, so we know what he can do. Power play Philadelphia. Rollers back in on Chekmonic. He plays it off the corner. Roberts got the roughing call at 11-24. This is the third power play of the game now. For Philadelphia, they did not convert 0 for 2 in the advantage. Look at this. I mean, it's a full press by the Leafs here. Down the man. They even had Glenn Wesley on the forecheck down behind the goal line. Nothing to lose here. You got to get a goal. You got to get back into this. They don't score left to go. In the second period, even short handed. Cleared up the near side. Owen Nolan protecting the puck of the body. Couldn't move it out. Johnson shifted in. Centering pass right through the middle. Gagne was trying to 
redirect. Gagne lost his stick, broken behind the net. So has a Toronto Maple Leaf lost his stick. It was the defenseman McKay. After Popko hands his stick off to him. Can't cover that up. You gotta move it. Boy, that could be a delay a game. It's not gonna be a whistle, but that was close. That it was. Little yard sale on broken hockey sticks. Hey, we want to take a moment to remind everybody that sleep is, in fact, overrated because tonight on ESPN and ESPN2, check this out. 10 Eastern, Minnesota Wild, Colorado Avs, Game 7. 10.30 Eastern on ESPN2, Canucks and St. Louis Blues, their Game 7. The Stanley Cup playoffs on ESPN, presented by Nextel, the NHL Stanley Cup playoffs on the Deuce. And depending on the outcome of these three Game 7s, the second round uh, matchups will be determined. Shot Laskevich, he broke his stick. Power play opportunity for Philadelphia. Short-handed here, Fitzgerald off the glass. Ken Hitchcock the other day was talking about all of the broken sticks that we have seen here in the playoffs and regular season, saying it may be time to look at these composite sticks the players are using. They use them for whip action and to develop speed, but a lot of them are breaking. Dotson drops it far side. Power play has got 28 seconds left on it. Came back. Amati, Johnson, Johnson, Ragnarsson, shot, the captain in front, deflected by Spala, couldn't move it out though, center, Amati, shot it off the crossbar, cleared to the near side, Tony Amati's talking to himself, Johnson drops it back, Ragnarsson set it up, power play still underway here, the shot fell for the save, rebound, Primo batted it behind the net. Primo trying to roll it in front. Can't get it there. Primo gets it back. Penalty's over. 5 on 5. Cabinet shot. Shooting gallery on Belfort now. One shot on the power play, but some real action in front of Eddie Belfort. Nobody wants Tony Amati to get a goal more than Jeremy Roenick. He tried to find him on this play, and he found him point blank. Amadi did the smart thing. He waited till Belfort went down. He had him down, but he didn't have him out, and he actually shot it over the crossbar, but what did that hit? A Toronto helmet? It did. It hit Robert Spala in the shoulder pad. Tony Amadi had the, you know what? He uses a blade that's very thin, so the puck has a tendency to bounce up unless the ice is good. Now that Tony Amani appears to be fighting it, the puck looks like it's alive on the stick. Scoring chances, you see the advantage there. Philadelphia centered Roberts, deflected back towards him. McGillney got it back out onto the point. Big pileup score! Toronto gets on the board, and Chigmanic is going to argue interference. There were two Leafs in the paint with him. We'll have to see who hit that last. But the signal right now is goal. Now, Roman Chekmanic has had to look down at the other end and see Ed Belfort draw penalty after penalty for goaltender interference. And Matt Sundin banged into him. Perhaps the refs ruled that he was pushed into him. Lume took the shot. Roberts and Sundin were there. But Matt Sundin did look like he backed into him. I think Roman Chekmanic had a legitimate beef, especially after the calls we've seen in this series. It's going to stand. Chegmatic bangs a stick on the ice as the official points the center ice for the faceoff. So with 6-10 to go in the second period, the Leafs are on the board. It's a start. It is 3-1. There's no review upstairs on goalie interference. That's a call made by the officials on the ice. And there was never an indication at all. There was an immediate point to the goal. Zydomi sends it in. Nadamir hit on him. McCain dumps it back. And Nadamir on center for Philadelphia. Ty Domi for the Leafs. New battle along the boards. Dug out of there. Hoagland trying to get it back to the point. Could not. Wesley had to play it back at center. 3-1. Flyers. The shutout of Roman Chekmanic. Got away with on that goal. And we're still waiting for the call as to who they credited for that. Sundin was the man in front, closest to it. Lume shot, Lume never touched anybody. Cleared back, the Skavich came back to get it. Waits as they clear the zone, and a whistle on a two-line pass. So Toronto not going to go quietly in Game 7. They're on the board. This shot for the cup and a piece of hurling history. What must be going through that young man's head? Young man's head.
Has he got what it takes to be a champion? Now during the National Caravan event, get the best values in America from Dodge. Take our best products like Dodge Caravan, the best-selling minivan ever, with available power sliding doors and power rear hatch. Plus our best warranty, Dodge's fully transferable 770 powertrain limited warranty. Plus our best deals, put 750 down and we'll match it. Plus get up to $3,500 cash allowance for a total down payment of up to five grand. Add it all up, it equals the best values in America. See your Dodge dealer or visit Dodge.com. Chevy continues to drive the nation. With 0% ABR financing for 60 months on every new 2003 Cavalier S10 and Tracker. Plus, get $1,000 down payment assistance on Cavalier S10 and Tracker. It's easy to make offers like these when you're in overdrive. See your local dealer. Build a foul Chevrolet. Well, this goal has cut the margin to two for the Flyers. Matt Sundin working on a screen. Gary Roberts to the side with the deflection. Roman Chekmanik was upset that Matt Sundin had banged into him. He didn't even see that Gary, Gary Roberts looked like he deflected that pretty close to the crossbar. They've given the goal to Lume for the moment, but it sure looks like that was hit by Gary Roberts. Uh, in any event, it is a goal. It's three to one. Primo back. Shot wide of the net. Rebound in front. Primo. Good point drawn onto the stick. Oh, and Nolan dug it out. But Belfort knows is he cannot give up any more goals in this game. Down goes Owen Nolan trying to draw the penalty, but he escaped it. Nolan got right back up. Played it near side for Tucker. Back to Nolan. Nolan goes to the point. Wanted a one-time Andropov. Shot it in. Almost Tucker. Tucker was trying to redirect. Ragnarsson ties him up. Andropov puts a hit on. Caverlet was waiting at the blue line. Couldn't get to it. Three on three, Primo back. His pass blocked, that creates the offside. Tomorrow night, Major League Baseball on ESPN and ESPN2 at 7 Eastern. The Cardinals will take on the Atlanta Braves. That'll be on ESPN, on ESPN2 at 7 Eastern. The Dodgers and the Reds. Some may see the Mets and Astros. Wednesday night baseball, ESPN and ESPN2. Gary Farr, Bill Clement, Chris Simpson with you and our crew here in uh, Philadelphia. While we have a moment, I want to give credit to all of our guys on this crew. Last night, we had a game, obviously, in overtime. Most of the people got up at 6 o'clock this morning or earlier to grab a plate and get back here to set up here in Philadelphia. These people being called on to produce and direct and to get the shots of this game, to put the audio together. Setups take a long time, and then you're supposed to be an artist. And that's what our people are doing here. Tremendous job for them. Back-to-backs are not easy, especially in the playoffs. Reiki at center. Mike Reiki came back to the red line to get it. Hope checked away. Sent back in behind it, and Eddie Belfour came back to get it. Very drops it off the far side. 3.53 left with Toronto once here at least one point this period. Try and give it to one for the third. Vandermeer shot deflected, rebound! We talked about the confidence that Ken Hitchcock had in the kid, Jimmy Vandermeer. Playing him here near the end of the second period, a good keep at the blue line by Vandermeer. Off the skate, he spotted somebody in front, just tripped at a nice deflectable shot that handcuffed Eddie Belfort, finally put home by Mark Reckie. It went Vandermeer to LaPointe, who dinged it off the post, right to Mark Reckie. A 4-1 to Flyers lead. And Hitchcock has pushed a magic button in this series, and particularly in this game, with the line he has put together with the Recky and the point working together. This is a new line tonight. It works, and yet you bet it does, because it was Michael Hansen's playing between Recky and LeClaire, but as soon as Radovan Somi came into the lineup, I think he needed the security blanket of having Hansus as his center. Thus, Ken Hitchcock replaced Hansus between Reggie and Leclerc with LaPointe. And as for LaPointe's had a tremendous series. 
There's an unsung, unexpected hero for Philadelphia so far in this series. It may very well be the point. Drop back for Stala, the goal by Recky. That's his fifth of the series from the point. And Vandermeer at 16 16, the points get two assists in the game. Back into the middle, a pass intended for Green. Came behind him off the deflection. 239 left to go. Second period and a 4 1 Flyers lead. Belfour save. Rebound shot wide of the net. Somic charging down the middle. And all of a sudden, there seem to be more rebounds available. Eddie Belfour. A little flustered here. Goals given up, especially after Toronto finally had gotten back. That shot hit the glass and just stayed back there as Holden rightfully wide. Came back to center. Ottawa will play the winner of this game. Back Domi leaves it Lume. Lume and Berg out there defensively. Philadelphia will change. Pass sent through the middle or attempted to block. Sent in by Primo. Primo heading into the corner. So is Belfort. They collide. Belfort trying to get back to the net dodge. And Eddie Belfort fully intended that there would be a collision. Oh, he, he took the shot at Keith Primo for sure. And he tried to get him again right there. Save made on the shot by Williams. He plays it off for Domi. Domi sends it out length of the ice. Check Monic back. Belfort's never lost the game seven. He is four and zero oh in game seven appearances. While Check Monic makes his first game seven appearance ever. McKay for Nolan. Nolan moving it up. Fans getting on Eddie Belfort. The puck came into the middle. Nolan the puck. Nolan a shot. Save made. Deflected near side. Shot McCabe. Save made. Check Monic at his Roman best. Save made again by McCabe. Nolan take it down by LeClaire. LeClaire trying to clear it up. Stepping in. Wesley shot. Block. Big hack put on the point by Wesley when he got away with it. There's some hacking going on out there now, Gary. You're right. Major hacks. That was a two-hander. We're talking Paul Bunyan. Look at this. In the corner, Eddie Belfort. We're going to get a whistle here. Belfort got pinned up in the corner as it heats up with 53 seconds left to go in the period. Parsky's calling coincidentals here. It looks like he's got Eddie Belfort and one of the Flyers. But Eddie Belfour has clearly lost his focus. He has come out and tried to seek physical revenge. Here's the first time he came out and just tried to jump in for the back of Keith Primo. The goaltender Toronto, minor penalty also, elbow. Here's the last one. Ed Belfour coming right at John LeClaire. That's how he picked up his. Did LeClaire get one there? I don't think so. I think there are two penalties being called here. Oh, both against Toronto? Both on the Leafs. Belfour gets one, and Wesley gets one for Slash. They uh, have come on blue. Yes, they have. Toronto Maple Leafs uh, a bit out of control here, down 4-1. to one. He's got two penalties in the game, and he gets an elbowing call. <laughs> Ultimately, Gary, it's difficult to change the spots of the Leopard. This Toronto team was the most undisciplined team in the NHL during the regular season. They marched to the penalty box and took more minor penalties than anybody else in the NHL. Now that they're up against it, they've gone back to what he did the best during the regular season, and that is shoot themselves in the foot when they least need it. They were tied for 26 in penalty minutes. And they've got a two-man, Philadelphia's got a two-man advantage again. Final minute of this period. Weinrich back for Janssen. Janssen drops it down low. Four to one. Centering pass block. Comes back to Recky. Shot. Recky's shot. He could be a tailor the way he can thread the needle. Watch when the rebound comes back to him off the block in front. He take, took his time, looked up almost on the goal line, about eight inches off the goal line when it came back to right here, and he dinged it off the post from an impossible angle. Threading the needle, Mark Recky, 5-1 Philadelphia. Recky is now the leading goal scorer in the playoffs. 
He's got six goals too in this game. McGillney, Langenbrunner, Sackick, Doug White, Martin St. Louis all at five. But Recky's got six. And the Flyers have a 5 1 lead. The biggest lead in this series. And still have a power play. And still have a period to go. That came with a two man advantage. Now it's a 5 on 4 power play. McGillney will move it out with 15 seconds to go in the period. McGillney short handed. Leaves it. Back for McGillney. Lost Primo. Berg's the only defenseman back. Two on one. Primo's on the other side. Gagne in. Gagne waiting, waiting, looking into the middle. Shot deflected. And that does it in the second. Flyers on the attack. Recky scored at 16 16. Recky scored again in 19 22. LaPointe, Vandermeer. Janssen, Weinrich have assists on those two goals. Coming up the intermission, John and Barry, Wild Ass, Blues Canucks, and an intermission interview with Chris Simpson from Philadelphia. This is Game 7, the Flyers after two up by four. capable of taking you to places on Earth that are rough. So the all-new Forerunner has been designed to be even more spacious and comfortable along the way. You'll feel like you finally got some breathing room between yourself and everyone else. The all-new Forerunner. No other SUV has ever been on its terrain. Honey? Will you run out and get me something crunchy? Crunchy. I'm on it. And chewy. Crunchy and chewy. And cheesy. Crunchy, chewy, cheesy. Crunchy, chewy, cheesy. And melty. Satisfy all your cravings with Taco Bell's Cheesy Gordita Crunch. Warm flatbread covered in three melted cheeses. Wrapped around a crunchy taco and topped with a zesty pepper jack sauce. Mm. To get the Cheesy Gordita Crunch, think outside the bun. This shot for the cop and a piece of hurling history. What must be going through that young man's head? Young man's head, young man's head. Has he got what it takes to be a champion? champion, champion. terrain SUV tires specifically for SUVs to help provide responsive handling and a smooth ride. You'd be surprised just how smooth. Michelin, because so much is riding on your tires. Something incredible is happening to guys everywhere. They're defying gravity. Mach 3 Turbo. Total comfort whether you shave down or up. An anti-friction coating on all three blades. Plus a strip with more lubrication. So even against the grain, you get less irritation and the closest shave. Can your razor do this? Unbelievable. Mach 3 Turbo. From Gillette, the best a man can get. Back, John Saunders and Barry Melrose here watching the Philadelphia Flyers put away the Toronto Maple Leafs 5 to 1. This series has already gone 22 periods if you include the overtime. At the end of this game, if it ends in regulation, which it looks like it will, it will be the second longest series in history, and the Leafs go out like this? Well, Toronto doesn't deserve this. This should be a good game. The bottom line is they've been so emotional, so resilient all playoffs long. They've ran out of gas. Philadelphia's a much deeper team. It is a big night here on ESPN and ESPN2. Three game sevens, including Colorado and Minnesota, up next here. For more on that, let's join Steve Levy. All right, John, thanks very much. And clearly, Colorado had the experience edge over the third-year Minnesota Wild coming into this series. But Colorado has the experience advantage in a lot of different ways. All sorts of problems closing teams out. They play. This will be their fifth consecutive Game 7. Of the previous four, they've won three of them. But their last Game 7 was the 7 to nothing loss in Detroit last year. And Darren Pang, of course, everyone remembers that. In terms of what we know about the Wild, we found out something about this club after they blew the two 
two goal lead last night and rallied to win in overtime. Yeah, they really, really calmed themselves down in the locker room and they said all the right things. They came, they came out on a positive note. But I think the great thing about the playoffs, Steve, is that the fact that anybody can be a hero. And Richard Parker's a guy that had tough luck during the playoffs. And sure enough, you come into overtime, he'd already scored the first goal of the game, a beauty above the glove. Now he comes in, takes a pass from West Walls, and this one just deflected off the heel of the stick between the legs of Patrick Waugh. That ends up being the game-winning goal, obviously, in overtime. Following the game, Patrick Waugh addressed the media, took the blame in times where a lot of athletes that are great athletes, they talk about bad luck and bounces. Not Patrick Waugh after that one. He took complete blame himself. But look at the experience factor between Manny Fernandez and, of course, the future Hall of Famer, Patrick Waugh. 151 wins for Patrick, but Manny Fernandez is on a roll. He's playing with plenty of confidence, and you have to love uh, the way he's playing coming into this game on the road. Waugh figures to get some more help tonight. We believe Adam Foote will play. He's definitely going to take the pre game warm up and then we expect his foot to be okay hey after all it is a game seven speaking of game seven let's go to vancouver for a preview of that game against the blues out to dave strader and brian engblom thank you steve brian how often do we hear after a playoff series about a player or maybe a group of players that played through incredible injuries well we know prior to this game seven that al mcginnis of the st louis blues separated shoulder and all is going to give it a try it is amazing how many times this happens in the playoffs and al mcginnis did skate this morning what they get with al mcginnis back in the lineup is a tremendous presence on the power play that big shot and all but it's the stability factor that really makes the biggest difference. Inside his own zone, he absolutely controls everything. His first pass coming out of his own end is the best in the National Hockey League. In the last couple of games, his forwards have suffered having to get pucks off the wall. They won't have to with Allen the lineup. After six games between these two teams, you look for certain trends. We have a goaltender going one way, the other guy going the other way. Yeah, for Chris Osgood, things started out great. It was a 6 nothing victory in game one. But the last couple of games, there have been some goofy goals that have gone in, and the luck has changed a little bit. Vancouver is playing better in front of him, and they seem to be getting under his skin a little bit. It looks like he's not as strong as he was. For Dan Cloutier, exactly the opposite. He starts off the series with a 6 nothing loss. His mechanics are not very good at all, but he's really worked hard on them in the last couple of days, and he looks like he's back to square one. There will be a lot of contact in the crease, that's for sure. If Vancouver wins tonight, third time in franchise history, recovering from a 3-1 deficit. John? All right, guys, we'll see you a little bit later on. Reading some of the thoughts of some of the players, Chris Osgood said, you know, I'm not nervous. This is no pressure on this. It's absolutely an opportunity is how we looked at it. It is an opportunity, and this is why St. Louis got this guy. A veteran goaltender has won the Stanley Cup, been on another team that won the Stanley Cup. This is his time to shine. All right, so it's a very busy night of Game 7s here on ESPN and ESPN2. Up next when we're done with the Leafs and the Flyers, the Wild and the Avalanche, and then on ESPN2, the Blues and the Canucks. Yo, Method Man and Red Man here to show you how Power Strike from Right Guard Extreme works. Stop this strike with extra older fighters. Let's pretend this huge elastic band is the Power Strike, and these guys are older. Let's see what happens when older meets the Power Strike. Oh, see, it repels it for a new level of protection. <laughs> Goes on clear, doesn't quit. <laughs> Get more stream. Get the power strike, dude. Okay, let's say this is your car and you get into an accident. Oh, boy. If you take it to an Allstate recommended repair shop, they'll fix it. So you're pretty happy. You're like, ooh, I'm pretty happy. Even better, Allstate guarantees the workmanship for as long as you own the car, which means if even the smallest thing goes wrong, you don't have to pay for it. So you're still happy. You're like, ooh, I'm... I'm still happy. So there you go, the Allstate Lifetime Repair Guarantee. Call now and find out how you're in good hands with Allstate. We're ready in advance. No matter when or where. We're ready in advance. Whatever's waiting there. Around these parts. Trouble doesn't stand a chance. For the best parts, people at the price, we're ready in advance. Yeah, bring it on. What's so incredible? This. The system must think I'm him. Who? Him. Holy, that's all his stuff. I can't that's... believe we're in here. Talk about your insider information. D. Cool. He can see us. So. Cover me. I'm going in. Browser. Someone you never worry about when your systems are secure. Novell. Morning. 
Morning. Mm. I tell you, I love these cinnamon rolls. <laughs> no kidding. I'm not sure. Toronto now has 20 minutes remaining to bounce back from down 5 to 1 to the Philadelphia Flyers, or the Flyers are going on to face the Ottawa Senators. Let's return out to Philadelphia and join Chris Simpson, who's with Mark Recchi. Well, Mark Recchi's fifth and sixth goals of uh, the series gives the Flyers a 5-1 lead after two. Mark, quite a different game than uh, we saw last night. Yeah, we, you know, we got a lot of energy, and it's amazing. The guy's really sucking it up right now. And, and doing a terrific job. I mean, that's a that's a good hockey team over there, and they're battling hard. But we got some lucky breaks, and, and we'll take them. And, and uh, now we're gonna have a big third here. Now it's been such a physical series. We're starting to see the emotions spilling over. What do you think we can expect in the third? Well, I think obviously there's some frustration on their part, and and uh, you know, I mean, uh, when you get down like that in a game seven, I think it, it is pretty disappointing. And and uh, you know, I expect they won't quit. They'll come out and keep trying to keep trying to bang away at us and see what happens. But uh, you know, I don't expect anything crazy. So. One period away from moving into round two. How does that sound to you? Uh, it sounds great. It's been a little while for us here. So, uh, you know, like I said, let's have one more and, and one more big period. And let's uh, hopefully we're getting ready for a, a big uh, game whenever, whenever we have to start here. Mark, thanks for this. You're welcome. Thanks. In typical fashion, does want to talk about that next game until this one is done. 20 minutes left for Mark Recchi and a 5-1 lead over the Leafs. I like the skate. I don't like the sweat. I use Red Zone because it's the strongest stuff you can get, made just for guys. It absorbs in and helps stop sweat, period. Try it. If you don't like it, Old Spice will buy you a stick of something else. Dude, think about it. Would they guarantee it if it didn't work? Red Zone from Old Spice. What if the prophecy is true? What if tomorrow the war could be over? Isn't that worth fighting for? Isn't that worth dying for? The Matrix Reloaded. Rated R starts May 15th. For the best protection against water damage, one name says it all. Thompson's Water Seal, Wood Protector Plus Waterproofer for the highest level of water protection guaranteed. Thompson's Water Seal and New Advance, the most powerful protection against water damage. Is there a bigger crapshoot in the NFL draft? The only sure thing is that Jet fans will hate their pick. Rome is burning. Premieres Tuesday, May 6th at 7 Eastern. Jim Rome is back on ESPN. Carr brings the offense to the line. It's third and long once again for the Texans. What does your team need? Watch the 2003 NFL draft on ESPN because every round counts. This Saturday and Sunday only... Here's what's playing this month on Insights On Demand TV. Go done. You can start any movie anytime you want. What else can you do? Even pause, rewind, and fast forward. All with your Insight Digital Remote. Oh! No VCR or DVD player required. No one in my family has ever gone out with a non-Greek before. Oh! On Demand TV. Only on Insight Digital Cable. What's your insight? can go from 0 to 60 in seconds and get 0 for 60. It's Pontiac performance season. Get 0% financing for 60 months on a 2003 Pontiac and never pay interest, ever. Or get $3,000 cash back on most 2003 Pontiac models. See Mike Razor Pontiac. 5-1, what do we have in the third period? Any of you guys expect the Toronto Maple Leafs to quit? You are sadly mistaken. They'll battle to the end, John. Ooh, you're a naughty little boy, are you? Keep it up, and I'm gonna give you a spanking. I'll teach you the meaning of respect. You're not getting any of my butt left. Do you hear me? No kisses for you. Not till you learn to obey me. Now, get down on all fours. 
with a great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. Make it a Bud Light. Hey! That thing got a Hemi, right? Yeah! Well, now I got a Hemi, too! But I got something you don't got! Check this out! Dodge Ram 1500. Hemi legend continues. <laughs> Grab Dodge's 770 powertrain limited warranty. Ford, Chevy, and Toyota don't match it. Another pure performance from Pure Later. Underneath the car is where I belong. 3,000 miles is really too long. Every time I put that filter on my ride, dirt, sludge, and grime's got no place to hide. You make my engine purr like a cat. That's all you see on the bill of my hat. For performance that'll inspire any do-it-yourselfer, put on a Purolator. Now at Pet Boys, save a dollar fifty when you step up to a Pure One filter. It's a beast at Applebee's. I'll be on my own. And it's spicy, it sure is nice. I love the combo. Cage and combos, yes, and all the twice the kilo. Well, I'm gonna get my fill with one great kilo. Why should you consider getting an education in the Navy? This is one of your classrooms. Navy, accelerate your life. The definitive source for everything baseball. Catch all the scores and highlights from around the league. Baseball tonight, all season long on ESPN and ESPN2. Stanley Cup playoffs on ESPN, presented by Nextel. This ESPN exclusive presentation brought to you by Nextel. Life's better when your cell phone has a walkie-talkie. And in part by Bud Light, the proud sponsor of the NHL. And Dodge, the official road team of the NHL. Grab life by the horns, Dodge. Philadelphia had a 3 0 lead. Toronto waited 3 1. And then the Flyers responded with two more goals in the second period. We go to the third. It is 5 1 Philadelphia. Power play continuing as Philadelphia still has a minute left on the advantage. Looking to wrap it up and move on are the Flyers to take on Ottawa in the second round. Straight down the middle. Bell for the save. Rebound. Bell for the save off Kapanen. Boy, for a guy with a banged up knee, Jeremy Roenick has skated like a champ in this game. Crashed into the boards in game six, but has responded here in game seven. It looks like he's got great leg drive. I asked him before the game, I said, did you get a lot of sleep today? He said, nope, I'm playing on pure adrenaline. Couldn't sleep at all. And it's really flowing now with a 5-1 lead in the game. By the way, that goal still credited to Lou May. His first goal in 35 playoff games. The only one up there for Toronto. Gary Thornwell, Clement, Chris Simpson, our crew on hand here in Philadelphia. Game seven, where the Flyers have taken over. And are on a rampage here against Eddie Belfour in Toronto with that 5 1 lead. Power play still underway. Near side, Ronan looking. Mike has got two goals in the game, a chance for a hat trick. Wayne Gretzky is the last player in the game seven. Good score to hat trick. Johnson, Recky's got a shot at it tonight. Recky now leads all playoff goal scorers with six. Penalty's over. Center shot. Got the crossbar. Rebound. Amante twice. Tony Amante's gone. What a good. Again, I go. He had a great 
chance in the last period, and he gets one right there. And it bounced off the crossfire behind Belfort and out. Five on five. Burrick leaves it. Cross centering pass through everybody. Back into the zone. Belfort back to get it. Off the far side. Lume near side coming back. Lume has spun around. Played by Primo. Lume reaching in. Cleared around by Reichel. Length of the ice. Icing call coming on the tight. Tony Amante must just be muttering to himself on the bench. This one off the crossbar. We thought in the second period he might have run one off the crossbar. He missed it. Didn't even hit the crossbar. This one is, in fact, look at that belt for where is it? I have no idea. And then Amadi came in. Owen Nolan did a good job of locking Tony Amadi out because Amadi even had a shot at the rebound. Tony Amadi has a three, two game scoring streak coming into this with no goals in the last 11 playoff games. And even he's starting to smile about it a little bit. He can do that with his team ahead. Exactly. He just let to get it over with here and get one. No goals last 11 longest playoff drought of his career. Last one with Chicago. That was six years ago. <laughs> Seems like 100 if you're Tony Amati. Fitzgerald on the near side. Got it out of there. Into the zone. Toronto. Imagine what it's going to be like for the Leafs. They have battled in overtime games to stay in this thing. To get it to a game seven. The overtime, double overtime victory in last night's game in Toronto. Now it's up to a third period down five. In this game, trying to dig down and find a way to keep going in these kind of games is not easy. Renberg circled the net. Fitzgerald dropped it off. Well checked away from right, played by Summit. Zomik sends it in. And what the officials are hoping, along with the NHL, is that nobody gets stupid here in the third period of a game that may be out of control. Gentlemen, we hope you brought your brains with you from the locker room. Into the middle, John LaClaire, and he's going to be offside. LaPointe had fallen at the blue line, and LaClaire brought it in. LaPointe couldn't get back up and out of the zone. What a game Cole LaPointe has had. So many people were surprised the New York Islanders were willing to let him come to Philadelphia. The Flyers were thrilled to get him. The little guy with a big heart that does so many things well, great on the faceoffs, great penalty killer, junkyard dog mentality. Picked up two assists in this game tonight, and one of them in the first period was a, a huge He led the Flyers in face-off win percentage during the regular season. 56%. Belfort has the run. Carvalet has got it. That will go the length of the ice, and this one will be touched up by Rackinson for the icing call. I mentioned both the points. He is centering a line that features Mark Recchi. And Mark Recchi in the second period, two tallies. One for Belfort's right, and one for Belfort's left, where he threaded the needle. Number four, number five goals for the Flyers, both scored by Mark Recchi. That was Wayne Gretzky, the last half that game seven hat trick. That came back in 93 against, guess who? Toronto. Last time there's been a game seven hat trick. Shot wide on the near side. Jeremy Roenick's on a mission right now, and that is just to give Tony Amati a goal. That one cleared out the center. Next round is going to begin on Thursday, round two. ESPN, ESPN 2 will have games Thursday night, yet to be decided who will be playing in those games, but it will be Thursday for round two on both ESPN and ESPN 2. Back up, Johnson got it ahead. Cleared on the flip, Primo. The collision got the better of it. Near side boards, knocked down Williams. Had to run it into the corner. Gagne came in to help. Williams still has the puck. He turned it back near side. Uh, he'll just feather that one back into the corner. McCabe lost the stick. Owen Nolan gives him his. There's McCabe in front. Williams a chance to walk. That's why you give the defense the stick. That's where the shooter is going to be, even if it's the wrong side for you. You still get a stick. Flyers cleared back out. Getting back on side. Tucker trying to move it in. Flipped it in. Right back out of there. Rashier cleared the zone. Sends it deep. Belfort stripped and fell. Solnick moved in. Trying to tie his man up. 
third period isn't starting any better for Eddie Belfort. You know, he really got himself in trouble in the first period with a couple of bad clears. One of them cost him a goal. And uh, it, it has just not been a typical out in for Ed Belfort. I give full credit to the Flyers who have just come at him. I mean, it's shown no mercy on the driving the net, on shooting the net, on driving for rebounds. But Eddie Belfort has created some problems for himself tonight. Not a typical series for Belfort, Belfort or Toronto. As they uh, gone through a stretch where they gave up at least three goals a game. And then ended up shutting that down last night. Only to come back here in tonight's game and give up five. Knocked away by Fitzgerald from Brashier. Toronto deep in the zone, Fitzgerald. It'll be a bitter disappointment for Toronto and their owners because as soon as this season ends, which is going to be tonight, there will be new ownership in Toronto. The deal is already done. It uh, goes into effect at the end of the season. That one blocked to the near side. And decisions left to be made by the new owners on some high-priced players who were brought in this season to try and win. Into the middle, Terry lays it for Recky, looking for the trick. His shot, and he go for the set. Game seven, the Flyers looking to move on to face Ottawa, have a four goal lead. Hey, honey, I got on that earlier flight out of Boston. Can you still pick me up? Sure, I'll be there. Great, I'll see you in LA. Life's good when you're Kristen Davis. But life's better when you're Kristen Davis and you have the cell phone with a walkie-talkie. Hello! Coast-to-coast -coast walkie talkie service coming soon, only from Nextel. All right! Awesome saves out there. First period starts in five. To the end of our losing streak. Yeah. Hey, Don! Hey, what's up? You going to Tommy's party? I can't. I'm working. Oh, uh, break, break, break. The Dodge SXTs. Four cool cars. And you won't have to work two jobs just to buy one. I like your hat. <laughs> Grab that new 770 powertrain limited warranty. Or Chevy and Toyota don't match it. This really is about a birthday party that went bad for Ed Belfour. Last night in Toronto, we celebrated his 38th birthday with that double overtime win. No party for Ed Belfour today. Not yet, anyway. Time's running out, though, and the Flyers in complete control. And what a luxury to just let the puck do the work. They don't have to make any low percentage plays. Just play on. Eddie Belfour, LeClaire, save. John LeClaire in front. Immediately backs off. No need to charge the net. Have a penalty call here. Belfour knocked it down. Flyers again, almost doubling up on shots on the leash. Marcus Ragnarsson is the defenseman for the Flyers that just got it in on Ed Belfort. And that's what the Flyers have done better as the series has gone along. Got cut by legs out of the blue line. And allowed their forwards to try to outquick Toronto's defense or outmuscle them if they're big enough. 19, uh, brother, the goal by Roberts. We thought it should have been his, is his. They've given it to Lume, they've changed it. So the Toronto goal is Roberts from Lume and McGill. It's his first goal in the playoffs in 14 the playoff game. Little run on the far side. Amati again. Belfour. And he'll hang on. Let's take a look at our Bud Light Stanley Cup summary from Philadelphia. Today, four time in NHL history, there have been three game sevens in the same day. And six of nine overtime games have gone to the multiple overtimes this season. The record is seven. We are thankful we are not going to reach that record in this game. Not that we don't like overtimes, but right now we don't need them. Off the board, Spela. Spela drops it around behind the net. Especially with another game seven starting at 10 p.m. Eastern. Uh, yeah. That's right. Two more game sevens to come. Will the Wild have an upset the likes of Anaheim? Anaheim defeated Detroit. The Wild are trying to knock off the Colorado Avalanche. The 
And Vancouver's trying to stage a dramatic comeback after getting down two in that series. They've come back to take St. Louis to second. Delfour gets a Bronx cheer and pull it up for handling the puck and not putting it in his own net. Centering pass. Nolan cutting into the middle. Pass to him was behind him. Solomon drops it deeper into the zone. Philadelphia changing up. Just waited until they got fresh legs out on the ice. Shipped in by Solomon. Later on by Belfort. Brashier moved in. They reverse it. Brashier to the on first. The far side draws cheers. Reichel shot it in wide. A low in Czechmanic. Czechmanic is going to win his first playoff series. He has done it before outside the NHL. Playing in World Championship games for the Czech Republic. Three World Championships to his credit as a goaltender. The NHL won. So going to be number one here in this series tonight. So when we point out that this is Roman Tetonic's first game seven, if anybody expected him to, to kind of choke up. I mean, he's got enough international experience. Look at this. Here we go. He did not. Leclerc moves it in. Leclerc center shot. Go for Brooks. He rebounds. Flyers little big man has been huge when they have needed him. Mark Recchi started it. Leafs flopping all over the place. They were pressing. But watch this play by John LeClair. He kept going, going, waiting to clear. Defenseman down his face. And Flo LaPointe had the rebound come right back to him. From our Southwest Airlines goal cam, all of those rebounds that Ed Belfort has been able to control before tonight works against him. Six to one. Corruption now wants to play running time. This is Nobody wants that more than Eddie Belfort. Player behind the net, 11, 20 left to go here in the third. Green. Near side for Domi. Domi will send it in. Check Monty going to the net for play. Just gave it. Takes it behind the net. Good time by Oakland. Shot terribly shot deflected. Domi was on in front. Backhander on Check Monty. Blocked before it got to him. Here's Ty Domi. Again in. Trying to bank it off the goaltender Green. Goes back to the point intercepted by Mike Recchi. Fans and flyer players, Mike Recchi, they get that trick. Save made, Belfort rebound, Belfort checked by Recchi wide. Mike Recchi being tied up from behind as he went for goal number three in this game. Camberley sends it in. Now we're going to play a little shinny hockey. Move to the boards. Wide open action. 8-28. The point gets his first of the year. Leclerc and Recchi pick up the assists. Down goes Kapanen, Belfort pushed it away, Lume. Tied up Roenick, and hit front shot. They still want Amani, Amani to get one. That's all Jeremy Roenick wants, is for his buddy and linemate Tony Amani to get one. And it's not just to make him feel good, it's, it's, going. it's to get him going for the next series. Kapanen sends that one in. These Flyers, they're going to be facing the Ottawa team that finished number one in the Eastern Conference. That one blocked away by Roberts. Flyers get it back in their own end. 9.54 remaining here in the third period. McKay brought it in. Fans begin the na-na-na, say, hey, hey, goodbye. Intercepted by Sundin. His backhander goes into the net again. Here watching the Stanley Cup playoffs on ESPN, presented by Nextel, where the Flyers lead at 6-1. Good job, man. Rusty, what's your hurry? Hey, we're trying to get home. Introducing the Dodge SRT series. Race inspired, street legal. Sweet. Here's what's playing this month on Insights On Demand TV. Cool time. You can start any movie anytime you want. What else can you do? Even pause, rewind, and fast forward, all with your Insight Digital Remote. Oh! No VCR or DVD player required. No one in my family has ever gone out with a non-Greek before. Oh! 
on-demand TV, only on Insight Digital Cable. What's your insight? I tell you, people love digital cable for the strangest reasons. Like I'm showing this lady all the interactive features, and I get to the blackjack, she goes nuts. Head, head, gimme, 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 come on, come on, come on. Insight Digital Cable has lots of interactive features. Everyone's got their favorite. What's your insight? It's been a while. For Bob Point, his first playoff goal since 1993. He scored it with the Quebec Nordiques against Montreal in the 93 playoffs. But didn't go any farther than that because Montreal won the Stanley Cup in 93. Philadelphia with a 6 to 1 lead, 9.32 left to go. Flyers last year lost in the first round. Guess who? Ottawa. The team they're going to get another shot at. Flyers had two goals in five games in that series against Ottawa. That was a question coming into the playoffs this year whether or not they find the offense. They have. Now it gets a little nippy. shows there they'll separate themselves and we'll check in with John Saunders John during the Bud Light update we take it back to last night in this shot force game seven Richard Park's second goal of the game Patrick Wall right through the five hole and that's why they are headed to a game number seven which will play tonight when you are done with the Leafs and the Flyers and that is coming right up the Wild and the Avalanche and what really makes that interesting is that the Wild lost the two-goal lead before they put that game away. And it, it was a late couple of goals picked up by the Avs that looked like they were on the on the roll and going to wrap it up. Should the Avs be favored in Game 7? I think yes. Can the Minnesota Wild win Game 7? You bet. Absolutely. What a confidence builder the way they did it last night. Backhander got blocked. Hands whose second chance goes to the boys. Looked up by Caberlay to the point. Set behind that at Soman. Soman passes. Brashier. Caberlay had it, lost it. Goes to the far side. Brashier coming over to get it. Now Brashier was voted by his teammates this year as the most improved player on the team. A good compliment coming from the guys you play with. There's Brashier. You can bet he's going to get a bunch of ice time here in the last eight minutes just to act as a sheriff out there. Away by Renberg. Rashier still battling. Caberlet's got it. Right now for Toronto. Hard to just keep your legs moving. Into the zone. Darian comes back to get it. Darian flipped it near side. Low point. And he brought it himself in offside as he lost control of it. 7.55 remaining on the board. Donald Brashier, more than just a, a physical presence out there. He's picked up a goal here in the playoffs and a pretty good year offensively. And he's reliable defensively. And you can't play for Ken Hitchcock unless you are reliable defensively. He's got to be able to count on you when the other team's got the puck. Came behind the net. Lome moved it up. Not out. Off the near side. Rikerson just dumps it. Chipped back Lume. Lume, Leclerc is back there with him. Forced him to turn around and go the other way. Blocked by Gagne. Finally poked back out the center. Here's Leclerc. Big blast. No. That one, that one. Ken Hitchcock is going to demand every flyer to change sticks, I think, before the second round starts. You know what, uh, Gary? His point was not only that the sticks tend to shatter or snap in two, but also that the shots are coming way faster than they used to, and, and they lead to, the shots lead to broken bones. So it's about broken sticks at the wrong time defensively and broken bones when you get hit with a shot from one of them. I don't remember seeing as many broken sticks as we have seen in this first round of the playoffs. Shot from far and gets who? Tony Amati battling to try and find the board. And even he's laughing as his teammates go by asking him, you ever scored a goal? Jeremy Roenick went right to him. Trust me when I, and he picked that one out of midair too. I mean, there's a fine line at times in our lives between laughing and crying. Jeremy, well, it's easy for Jeremy Roenick to yuck it up. Tony Amati is trying to smile through this, but believe me, if he doesn't get it going, 
Flyers be, will be without a very valuable offensive piece of the puzzle against Ottawa. He had 20 goals during the regular season. Finishing the year up, of course, after the deal that brought him here to Philadelphia. Toronto is 637 remaining, down 6-1 in this game. Johnson. Johnson gets it over to Weinrich. Round two starts Thursday. ESPN, ESPN2 will have it for you. Center. Bill Four makes another save on Williams. Redirected, but right into the middle. And Bell Four got it. 35 to 18. The shots in favor of Philadelphia. Here, in spite of the fact the Flyers have gotten six by Eddie Belfour. And he made some mental mistakes early in the game. He has also added some great saves to his videotape. Amazing. You know, terrific save. That's some strong games. Check Monik here's getting a break in the third period as most of the game, this, most of this period is being played now at the other end. That one uh, shot back in, got deflected. Donnie and Williams gave Philadelphia a 2 0 lead. Primo made it 3 0. Then Lume scored for Toronto. But Recky, the last two goals, and a 6 1 flyer lead in this game as they have added extensively to it after they got going in that second period. Incredibly, the scoring chances 24 7 in favor of he saw the stick get up and uh, slashed at him with his stick, and now in moves Owen Nolan. Donald Brashear got Darcy Tucker with what looked like an elbow when Tucker tried to dip under him right in front of Toronto's bench, and Tucker turned around and did not pass go, didn't bother with the 200 bucks right there. He went right after Brashear. Now, NBA playoffs on ESPN. You know I like you. I like you a lot. I like Janice a lot too, and I know she's your roommate. And Janice? I'm not sure how to say this to you. You know that I like you a lot, right? Yeah. It's just that I like Janice a lot too, and I know she's your roommate, and I will. So date both of us. What? What did you say? Did you, madam, proceed to wear this shirt? Knowing full well that your neighbor had already received this title. Well, well indeed. Your witness. Your Honor, I have only one thing to present in defense of my client. The Dodge Caravan. Proving once again, Dodge Caravan is the choice of great moms everywhere. I told you we should have settled. <laughs> 770 powertrain limited warranty. Ford, Chevy, Toyota, and Honda don't match it. Sheriff get to work. If his name is Donald Brashear, he comes in his bright yellow Lamborghini. And if he doesn't pull a groin getting out of the thing, he is able to be the Flyers enforcer. Maybe the way out the roof rather than out the door for Brashear, don't you think? That looks pretty good to set there. There's a TV series there somewhere. That one is sent in by Janssen, got deflected power play. Tucker got the penalty at 14.39 for high sticky. This is the sixth power play of the game for Philadelphia. They uh, have picked up one power play goal. They are now five for 30. This is the 34th, five for 34 in the series. Williams drops it off, Ruggie looking for a hat trick, has it in the corner. A point, the only goal here in the third period, three of the six flyer goals have been scored by players who did not have a goal in this series prior to tonight. Primo, the point, and Williams. Uh, Rucky has picked up two, shot the player, backed it into the middle again. Belfort was there to cover on the short side. 6-1, Flyers on top in this game seven. Two more game sevens to come. We will have uh, the Wild on the Avalanche right here on ESPN following our game. Johnson sent it in. 
Knocked down. Recky. Recky moving. Takes it behind the net. He moving in, trying to hit the player in the cave. Off the glass and out. It's kind of like not wanting to rub it in here. The power play's not going real fast because of the score. Coming up next, game seven. Blues and Canucks, their game seven will be on ESPN 2 at 10 30. The Flyers right now are just kind of not stopping, but not playing at 100% either. And here on the far side with a little power play time knocked away by Sundin. Nice to get a check on it. Flyers are just in clock mode. Yep, right now. Keep that clock going. Flyers move back for four seconds left on the power play. Sent around the net. Murray came back to get it. Trying to jam it out at it. Blocked back there by Gagne. Ian Berg battling for it. Williams going out. Williams goes to Hansis. Power play over. Five on five. Williams behind the net. One shot off that power play. On the point chance. Primo out in front. Tried to tip that shot. by he escaped. Didn't get it. McGillney. Williams almost had that one off the boards. Cavalier plays it back. Cavalier drops it. Well, at least uh, some of the playoffs for the second round start taking shape here. New Jersey will be playing Tampa Bay in the East. That'll be the number two seed, New Jersey. Number three, Tampa Bay, because they won the division. And Ottawa, the number one seed, will be playing Philadelphia end up number four in the East. Knocking off the number five team, Toronto. Moved back by Nolan. Nolan drops it off the board. Out of here, game over. Put the check on. Adley cleared it out two on one. Amani again to Roman. Roman trying to draw it back and got tied up. Amani comes back to play it. Avoids the end of Svela. Looks in the middle for Terry. Pass got blocked. Back for Amani intercepted. Then Tucker moved it across ice. Svela will pick it up. We're down to the two minute mark here. Sent in by Svela. Whistle delayed. No, I'm not sure. Yet. Delayed outside, I guess. Yes. What a difference a year has made for the Flyers. Mind you, they have many different players, a new coach. But against Ottawa, last year in the playoffs, the Flyers scored two goals. This year against the Maple Leafs, they have scored 24. Fans wanted uh, Brashear to stay out there against Domi. Brashear has a word with the Toronto bench. He's still talking to him over there as he went off the ice. Domi had come out. Brashear started to the bench, started back onto the ice, and then went back to the bench. Hard for Ken Hitchcock to get him off. Yeah, he does. Ken Hitchcock doesn't want anything going on here. Well, Ty Domi is out there. He needs Donald Brashear. He respects him as a player, and there's nothing to be gained. Ken Domi is scrapped for either one of those players right now. And a 30 left to go. So a game seven that did not live up to the expectations of fans who want to see a great thrill, but certainly lived up to Flyer fans. Recky with two goals and an assist has led this team throughout the playoffs as he now has six goals. The point, a goal and two assists, Williams one and two, Primo one and one. It didn't take long for the tension in the stands here to turn what? into euphoria. One minute left to go. Philadelphia, one one loss, one and tied two against Ottawa during the regular season. That is the team that they will face in the second round. Last year came back on Lumet. Left to the near side. Philadelphia keeping the clock going. Fitzgerald's got it. Belfort will lose it, even though he made 30 saves in the game. Fitzgerald had another save to check on. And Gary, a lot of people thought that Eddie Belfort would be the difference in this series for Toronto. Ultimately, I think he was, but in a negative way here at Game 7. Enjoy the war. 6-1, Flyers over the Leafs, Game 7.
who last year made it to the conference finals before losing to Carolina, lose in the first round. And the Flyers who lost in the first round move on to the second. And Pat Quinn and Ken Hitchcock who won gold, coaching Team Canada at the Olympics in Salt Lake. They are friends. They went head to head behind the benches here. Pat Quinn for the first time in five years behind the center bench. Fails to get by round one. They line up for the traditional handshake. Romanchek Monik improves his playoff record of 7 and 10 and wins his first playoff series. There he is, the 32 year old netminder, whose numbers last year in the playoffs were very good, but he didn't have much support. They're very good this year, and he got offensive support. Justin Williams, his first career playoff goal, ends up with the game winner and the series winner here in game seven. Well, there's sure a lot of time they believe stopping to talk to Jeremy Roenick and to congratulate him. There's two combatants, Brashier and Domi. Jeremy Roenick was bloodied and banged in this series. But answered the bell every shift. Former teammates with the Chicago Blackhawks, Ronick and Eddie Belfort. One down, two to go. Three game seconds here on ESPN and ESPN 2 tonight. Some of the Leafs saying to Roman Chekmanic, we don't know how you do it, but you sure are good at it. Philadelphia, a chance to be the best offensive team in the first round of the playoffs. 24 goals in seven games in this series. They had two last year in the first round. Two goals in five games. Cheers for Roenick. You can hear Jeremy Roenick saying to Darcy Tucker, I have a lot of respect for you. And that is why players respect Roenick back. Chris Simpson standing next to Jeremy Roenick. Chris? Thanks very much. Well, it's the second longest series in NHL playoff history, but for the Philadelphia Flyers, it was worth the wait. How's it feel right now? It feels great right now. It's been, uh, been the hardest series I've ever been a part of. I take my hat off to the Toronto Maple Leafs. They put up a fight that all these people in this building, they don't, they don't understand how hard it was to play this series. So my hat goes off to their team and the, and the work that they put in. It was... It was an awesome series. You seem to be a man on a mission for the last two periods, doing everything you could to try and make your line mate Tony Amati a goal. He still, the threat continues, but it is just a matter of time for him. Well, we knew if we just stuck to the game plan, and Ken has really put together a great system for us, and everybody's bought into the system, which is which is very important. Now we, uh, we're going to play a tough opponent in Ottawa, and we just have to stay with it, and, and hopefully uh, the hockey gods are in our corner. And it wasn't always pretty to watch, but talk about Roman Czechmanic. Well, yeah, I'm, he's taking all the critics, and he's showing them what a world-class goaltender he is. And we're trying to play as hard as we can in front of him, and, and I'm telling you what, he's, uh, he's on a mission, too, so we couldn't be more proud of Roman. Well, Jeremy, I'll let you go celebrate with your teammates. Congratulations. Thanks a lot. Here's Jeremy Roman. Back to you guys. Thanks very much. So for Philadelphia now, a couple of days rest. They go back to work. One, one, and two in the regulation season to get started with a team now facing. They've got a red hot stick, Chris, and the man you're with, Mark Recky. Mark Recky, since this series began, you became a new father and the scoring leader of the NHL playoffs. How do you top this? Uh, this is, uh, I mean, it's a great way to finish the game the first round. Uh, we had a lot of trust in each other. We built it all year, and, and it came down to a big game seven. The guys really played well tonight. So. Now, obviously, the 6-1 score tonight really isn't a good indication of just how close this series was. Yeah, it was a terrific series. That's a heck of a hockey team over there. They got a lot of Warriors and a lot of great character guys, and give them a lot of credit. They, had, they were backs against the wall. They had a big one last night, and, you know, but we found a way to win tonight. I'm sure as much as you would have loved to have finished it off last night, how satisfying is it to have this win in front of the fans who have stuck by this team for a long time? Well, they deserve it. Uh, you know, the last couple of years haven't been very fun around here, and, and it's, it's nice to see them get rewarded and the players who have really, really stuck with it to get rewarded.
Well, Mark, congratulations. Thanks, anytime. Thank Mark Recchi's Philadelphia Flyers have won the big game seven and the series here tonight, guys. Chris, thanks very much. 6-1, the final. Now the Flyers move on to round two. Check Monik had a 9-2-0 save percentage in this series. And Mark Recchi has six goals in it. The game winners picked up in this series by Ronick, Recchi, Escavich, and Williams in this one. This is part of presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Another game seven. Minnesota's at Colorado. That's coming up. We're going to take you first to John and Barry in our studios. For Bill Clement and Chris Simpson and all of our crew, thanks very much for being with us here. Flyers won it 6 1. Joe Sackett, he knows all about Game 7s because his team, the Colorado Avalanche, have played themselves into a whole bunch of them over the last five years, needlessly sometimes. The Wild and the Avalanche, that is our next Game 7 coming up. Let's put this first one to bed. Let's first deal with the Toronto Maple Leafs. Uh, quite simply put, this is a proud team, a scrappy team. They ran out of gas. They ran out of gas, and I think really the turning point in the series is when Mogilny got hurt. Uh, he got that concussion issue, uh, the slap on the face with a stick. He was never the same player when he came back. He hit the post once, but other than that, he was dominant offensively the first couple of games for Toronto. Never really regained the form. Sandin was uh, held in check very, very well by the Philadelphia Flyers. Owen Nolan, who had a great finish for the Toronto Maple Leafs, was not an offensive player at all. He didn't even get scored a goal. And this, uh, I thought, would thrive in this style of hockey, the clutching and grabbing the physical play. Uh, he never scored a goal for Toronto. So that is the bottom line. When your best players aren't putting the puck in the net for you, John, you're going to have trouble. Eddie Belfort gave him a chance to win Game 7, but he just couldn't keep it going. He sort of self-destructed in Game 7. I think we both have enough respect for Owen Nolan to think that maybe something's wrong. I've got to think we're going to find out that he's playing with a, a broken rib or something because he is just too good a player and too good an offensive player and a guy that just should thrive in his style not to score some goals for the Toronto Maple Leafs. All right, the Philadelphia Flyers now they move on and the question is going to be whether or not they have enough left in the yeah. tank to face Ottawa but let's get to what they did tonight there's some players who stepped forward who really come out of nowhere almost young guys with young legs fresh legs I don't think I don't think Toronto's going to have enough or Philadelphia's going to have enough in the start of the series I think in game two or uh, they'll be ready to go but again not many teams can have young players like Gagne and Williams either one of these guys played at the end of the year they were both hurt they missed a significant amount of time and they just came to the forefront tonight. The difference is they're fast. They, they, they're big. they got great speed. Uh, they can finish when they get a chance. Uh, you know, when these two guys score, they had three guys score a goal tonight that hadn't scored a goal in the series. Toronto did not have that. Primo did not score a goal. Leclerc got one goal early in the series, I believe. Uh, Amante did not score a goal. What other team can afford three of their best offensive players not to score a goal and still win a seven-game series? That shows the depth of the Philadelphia Flyers. But Mark Recchi, I mean, incredible. He's talking about he, he has a son this past week. And he winds up with six goals in this series, and he's got to be key for them to have a chance with Ottawa. He, he will be key, and he uh, is the key player. This guy is a heart and soul guy. He scores goals, and I don't think he'll ever go into a prolonged slump because he goes to the front of the net. And if you go to the front of the net in the NHL or any level of hockey, you're going to score goals. He's got a great shot. He's always had a great wrist shot. He's a good skater. He's very underrated defensively. That means that Ken Hitchcock can play him in any situation when you're up by a goal or you're down by a goal. That is a, a key situation for an offensive player. He's a competitor. He's a warrior. Uh, he, he scores goals when he gets a chance, but uh, he goes to the front of the net. That's why he uh, consistently scores in the NHL. All right, so Philadelphia knows now after winning this Game 7, they will get the Ottawa Senators up next. And up next is our second Game 7, the Minnesota Wild. Who would have thought against the mighty Colorado Avalanche? For a preview, let's go to Denver and join Steve Levy. All right, John, thanks very much. And Darren Pang and I were watching the earlier game and were wondering really aloud. It's a similar goaltending matchup. Eddie Belfour against Roman Cechmonic. After a while against Manny Fernandez in terms of big game experience and really no experience at all. And Eddie Belfour gets lit up Panger for six. So the question is, could a similar fate happen to the great Patrick Wine here tonight? The one difference is, in Toronto, they play with a great deal of emotion, but no system. There have been breakdowns there defensively all season long, and Eddie Belfour has had to be spectacular. I just feel that he was out of gas. I don't think you see the same type of pressure, nor do you see the same type of breakdowns on the blue line for the Colorado Avalanche. All right, let's focus now on the atmosphere here in this game. There is tremendous excitement in the air. I think there is some fear in the air as well from the fans, although they, like the Avalanche players, have been through it before. They're always playing Game 7s and always seem to be playing them on home ice. 
Well, the one thing you have to keep in mind is that the guy in goal, and we'll continue talking about Patrick Waugh, is he's 6-6 six and six in game falls. This is 13th, game 7. That's a record. He breaks Glenn Anderson's mark, but he's 6-1 and one on home ice. So he has that advantage here. And if you go back in time, in 2001 on home ice, it was their advantage. They won the Stanley Cup against the Los Angeles Kings, although they squandered the They did win that game. But other things happen in situations like this. When you leave it to a game seven, where Peter Borg would rush to the screen and was gone in 2001, that was major. Obviously, last year in game seven, I think the Avalanche were completely out of gas. They had to play many Game 7s. They lost the dramatic game here on home ice in Game 6 with Patrick Watt thinking he had the puck, and he didn't, and he ran out of gas in Game 7. While well, you mentioned Forsberg, it's interesting to note that only three times in the last 50 games, including the playoffs, has someone on that Forsberg line not scored a goal. Two of those three times have been the last two games. It makes sense the Avs would lose those with the lack of offense, and it also makes sense Minnesota's won them because of Marion Gabrick's offense. Marion Gabrick uh, really exploded in the last game, really big based on the fact that Adam Foote was not on the ice. At even strength, Adam Foote was on the ice against Marion Gabbert. Marion Gabbert really came into his own. He had space and time in the neutral zone. He was skating like he did in the first 40 games of the regular season. A little shake and bake there, causing havoc, causing the Avalanche players to back up. And obviously, he scored a huge goal there on a breakaway, although they relinquished that lead. They had to come back and win it on, on Richard Park's overtime game-winning goal, but he was flying. That's the most confident I've seen him in this series. He figures to not be as confident tonight if, in fact, Adam Foote plays. He's out there right now behind us warming up. We expect him to give it a go, although he didn't warm up in last night's game as well and didn't play. Yeah, but I watched him walk into the building, and, it, and he wasn't quite as gingerly as he did in Game 6 in Minnesota. He's got a protective device on that right foot. I think it's a good sign that Adam Foote's out there for as long as he is and how he was moving laterally. I see no reason why Adam Foote wouldn't play in this game. Game six last night was rather interesting. We had more goals scored than penalties called in the hockey game. It was a tremendous show in St. Paul. We expect more of the same tonight here at the Pepsi Center for a game seven. Get your chills just saying game seven as we send it back to you guys. And we're getting chills just waiting to get up to you guys and listen to your call of the game. The Wild and the Avalanche inside the series. But here's the one that stands out to me, Barry. Right at the bottom there, 10 and 14 in their last 24 playoff games when they could eliminate an opponent. How could a team with this much talent have a statistic like that? And Patrick Wannett, and, yeah. and you would have thought when they went into overtime, uh, scoring that goal or those two goals late in the game to tie it up, did you think Patrick would close the door and they'd win an overtime handily? That has not been the case. Patrick Waugh has not got the job done. You remember uh, last year he got beat uh, in Game 6 and in Game 7 handily by the Detroit Red Wings 7-0. So uh, Patrick has been shaky in clutch games. He, it's hard to say why. He's, I still think he's the greatest goal in the NHL. If I play one game, I want that guy in net for me. But he hasn't performed well in, in clutch situations for the Avs lately. Yeah, it's one of those things that when you see him perform poorly, you're shocked, you are more, shocked. Than, more than anything else. You expect so much more. The guy who got the game winner last night against Patrick Waugh, two goals in the game, and Park has been a key factor. Well, he was a key factor, but Richard Park typifies the whole Minnesota team. He got the two goals in this game. So a beautiful goal right here. He looks off, and he caught that lob by surprise by making a perfect shot over his right shoulder. And then he got a break here, a soft goal on Patrick Waugh in overtime, break on the ice, right between the legs. Patrick acknowledges he's got to stop that. He knows that. But what's interesting is that game was Richard Park, okay? Walls has got goals. Gabbard got three points last game, but for most of the series, he was shut down. He's a superstar of the team. Ronick has not been a big factor. He's one of the offensive stars of this team. But everyone scores in this team. Kuba scores. Dupuy scores. Willie Mitchell scores. Guys you never even heard of scores from the Minnesota Wild. Who do you stop if you're the uh, Avalanche? Who do you put men on? Who do you put your checking line on? That's what the Minnesota Wild have. they got scoring by committee, and they're getting great goaltending and a great team defense. And for Colorado, as they watch the Philadelphia game and see Philadelphia do that at home, they can take heart. But just the same, if you let it go to a Game 7, right. guess what? Just about anything can and usually does happen. We have another Game 7 at 10.30 Eastern Time on ESPN2. The St. Louis Blues, who led this series three games to one, Vancouver comes back to tie that. Dave Strader and Brian Engblom will have the call. Let's join them now for a preview. All right, John, thanks very much. We heard you guys speculating about Owen Nolan, the injury that he might have, and that seems to be the case every year in the playoffs. Afterwards, we find out about how heroic somebody is. We do know this. Al McGinnis separated his shoulder in game two, was supposed to be looking at surgery done for the year. We expect him to play tonight. 
it's amazing how many times this happens in the playoffs. It always seems that one of the best players is uh, on the verge of going down or does get an injury and ends up playing through it. That was a hit by Todd for, for Tuesday, who was, what, 250 pounds plus equipment. And it's that right shoulder that got messed up for Al. You could see him valiantly going on there and trying to get something going. But for him to come back into the lineup, it, it, you know, it means that they're going to probably strap him up a little bit. But he obviously has a little bit of range of motion. The funny thing was that when they got on the plane to come here for Game 7, they didn't know Al was coming. He showed up at the plane at the last minute. They didn't have him on the manifest list to go through uh, uh, customs right. at Canada or anything like that. Al McInnes just showed up and said, yeah, I'm going. Well, if you believe it all in history, the Vancouver Canucks have uh, come back from a 3-1 series deficit twice in their history, so they do have uh, something on their side. Yeah, they do. I mean, Game 7 at home is, you know, it, that's what you fight for. You want to be have the advantage and you come back to your home bar and you go back to 92, Game 7, against uh, the Winnipeg Jets, and they were able to, to ice it in their favor. And this on the road, this is the, one of the famous goals that I remember of Pavel Dury scoring in uh, three overtimes to uh, put that one away. So, you know, having the track record and having experience helps, but it doesn't mean everything. Well, also, you look for uh, unexpected heroes. We heard Steve and Darren talking about uh, the Minnesota Wild and who are the heroes on that team. A lot of no names, and Barry and John were discussing it as well. But you look at this Vancouver roster, name that kind of jumps out Trevor Linden. Yeah, he's on the backside of a great career, but he has played in five Game 7s, including that memorable Stanley Cup final against the Rangers. Four goals and four assists. He lives for these kind of moments. That's tremendous production in Game 7 in a pressure situation. There are certain guys who always jump to the fore, and Trevor Linden's had a terrific career. He doesn't score goals the way he used to, but I think that Trevor Linden is going to be a really key player. He's been playing head up against Keith Kachuk a lot in this series. Keith Kachuk kind of rolled his eyes this morning when he was talking about Trevor Linden. He hasn't enjoyed it a whole lot, but I think the style of Trevor Linden, his experience at this level, and he looks so calm. It looked like he was having such a good time this morning that I think Linden's looking forward to this Game 7, too. All the tension and excitement of a Game 7. We're excited about calling the game. How do the players relax? How do they react while the Vancouver Canucks downstairs playing a little soccer? Wonder what John and Barry do before they get ready in the studio. Much wrestling. <laughs> oh, the St. Louis Blues have never lost a series when they were up 3-1. and one. And as the Morrison and Bertuzzi, eight points in the last two games after they were pretty much silent early in the series, and Barry, for this one, St. Louis, who led this series three games to one, they have to be wary because of the three game sevens, this is the only one where the team that won the last game in the series is now at home. And, and I think this is going to come down to goaltending, which we talked about all good against Cloutier, but I really think it's going to come down to superstars, which superstars show up. You saw the Bertuzzi, Naz, and Morrison stat there. That's pretty awesome. They've heated up so much the last two games. A lot of it is the stupidity of St. Louis Blues. They've taken a lot of penalties and gave that Vancouver Power a chance to go. But these guys are great players, two of the best offense players in the NHL, two of the three top goal scorers in the NHL this season, Naslin and Bertuzzi. Naslin's really on the mark now. He scored the last three games and dangerous every time he steps on the ice. Constant leader, just keeps his mouth shut, plays hard every night, good defensively, can play in any situation, and he makes Bertuzzi a better player, and he makes anyone around him a better player. I really think Naslin has to be stopped. I think Bertuzzi has to be controlled, and I really think a defenseman back there, Matthias Oland, is playing his best hockey uh, of the playoffs, and by far the best Vancouver defenseman. He has to be watched because he's jumping into the play offensively. So I think those things have to be taken care of by the St. Louis Blues. But Al McGinnis back in the lineup. He didn't want to miss this game with his teammates. He wanted to be yeah, there with them. Let me ask about that. You admire the heart of the guy to play, but shoulder injuries are extremely difficult for hockey players. I mean, he's putting himself in some danger here. No, no, he wouldn't. The doctors would never allow him to play if there's any ca chance that he can make this worse. It's the old saying we have in hockey, this might hurt you, but you can't hurt it. So they'll have him uh, taped up, but they'll have him taken care of, the pain will be taken care of, and they know that he can't make it any worse. That is the key. He wants to be with his teammates. He's not going to be 100%, but I'll take 50% of Al McGinnis any day of the week on my team. That's right, 50% on off the slap shot is still no, 60 no, hard no, on no, all that. No question. <laughs> <laughs> It is coming up, the Blues and the Canucks, that one on ESPN2 at 10.30 Eastern Time. Here on ESPN, we'll keep you up to date on that one. Dan, high note of the Colorado Avalanche, ready to go to a Game 7. When we come back, we'll take a look at his travels to make it to the NHL. Michelin designed the cross-terrain SUV tires specifically for SUVs to help provide responsive handling and a smooth ride. You'd be surprised just how smooth.
official, because so much is riding on your tires. One for 12 rounds is all about stamina. That's why I like high endurance from Old Spice. No deodorant protects better. And it'll last longer because it evaporates more slowly. Want proof? If you're not convinced, Old Spice will buy you stick with your old stuff. Let me put it this way. High endurance lasts longer than I do. I'm working on that. Looking for really tough virus protection? Switch to new MSN8. Sign up now and get virus protection that automatically scans your email. Plus two months free. It's better with a butterfly. Call 866-MSN8 today. Peter Forsberg generally comes up big in game sevens in big games, and this doesn't get any bigger than this. They don't get it, and the season comes to an end. Peter Forsberg and his teammate Dan Heinout about to take place in a game seven. A lot of pressure in that, but nowhere near the pressure for Dan Heinout had he gotten his original choice for a career, which was law enforcement, and he started out by going to the Army. It was kind of like I always knew that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to you know, go save the world. So I some cases, helped a lot of people. You know, helped the government, helped the USA. You know, all through high school, I wanted to go in the FBI. You know, so I, I picked West Point, seeing as I was in military school. It's so tough mentally when you go there that it's, it's a great place to learn who you are and what you can take and what you're capable of. I can imagine if he's still in the Army, he would fit in right in there. If you look at on the ice, he would do anything that's needed to make the team win. And so when you come to the NHL and you're sitting there and you're having these hard times and your coach is yelling at you and, you know, things aren't going right, you realize, you know, this isn't tough. What was tough is what I did at West Point. When you wake up, you need to shine your shoes, get your uniform all squared away, you need to memorize the, the main columns in the newspaper because at some point during the formation, an older officer or older classmate can come up to you and ask you, you know, what's in the paper? If you don't know any of this stuff, it counts against you in your military career. And then after your classes, you got hockey practice. It's a pretty awful in practice, so. And he says that because he's the worst practice player ever in history. <laughs> no. And everybody on the team knows it. No, he's not a practice player. And after hockey practice, you got, you know, dinner. Somewhere in between there, if you finish all your homework, keep your room straight. You get pretty tired by 11 o'clock. Just so happened the Avs were at uh, one of our games against a better team, and they were to scout somebody else when they saw us play, and then it kind of just went from there. And, you know, now it's helpless, because I'm sitting here watching it on CNN, and these guys are over there, you know, defending our country, you know, putting their lives on the line, and here I am playing a game. We're 100% behind them, so, you know, keep up the good work. Dan Hynot, Alexei Kovalev, and Don Sweeney, all 4-0 in game seven. And uh, a couple of hills got knocked off that list.